Hey, I'm John J. Lance, and、uh, I'm gonna talk about my music because that's the only thing I know how to do. So, this is an album. It's called Color This That. It came out in July,、uh, which is almost three months ago now because I'm, I'm doing this in October. I'm supposed to be doing like other things and working on other things, but I have time right now. All I have is time nowadays. So, I'm gonna do this.、Um, this is an album about death and dying and、uh, just one, wanting to kill yourself and among other things.、Um, suicide. It's about a lot of things.、Um, oh, shit. Oh, that's it. It's gone. Okay.、Um, I'm, just gonna, I'm just gonna scroll through. So, it's about these things.、Um, and a lot, a lot of people, I think, they see, see this and just no part of it. It's just going, yikes.、Um, which is valid. I mean, who wants to think about these things right now out of all、um, times that they have to live through?、Um, so, this album is not, not a reaction to 2020 because、um, I wrote most of this, these songs in like 2018.、Um, I just hold, held off on making it because I had to make Unpop.、Um, so, a lot of these songs are quite old.、Um, this is probably the old,、um, this album that took me the longest time. No, not really, because for like a whole year I just didn't work on it at all. So yeah, I, I just think about <laughs> this stuff, so that's why I made an album about it. And it's also the most lyrically dense album I've made. It's probably, in terms of, in terms of word count, it's probably longer than Rain or, or Unpop. Rain is like 18 minutes. Actually, it's almost 19 minutes, so it's double the length of this album, but still doesn't even come close to the word count, in terms of the word count, I think. Um, it's very dense in terms of the word counts. Like, like this first song,、um, it's like two, three minutes, but it's like, it has, I think, like 500 words. Especially this verse is quite long.、Um, yeah,、um, I knew that the story needed,、uh, needed a lot of words to properly convey. convey.、Um, this is almost some of these leads like a novel.、Um, which is because it was a, was a novel.、Um, So, how I came up with this album was it was 2018, and、uh, I wanted to make a rap album because I haven't really listened to a lot of rap albums. I don't really listen to a lot of rap music.、Um, now,、uh, as I was make, in the process of making this album, I got to listen to a lot more. But back then, I just didn't、really、listen to a lot of it. And t h a t because I think it's bad, because a lot of rap music I, I, I had heard at the time is really good. So, I wanted to listen to it more of it, and I wanted to get to appreciate more of it. I mean, Usually, when I'm trying to appreciate something, I try to imitate it. Just kind of how I, how, how I do things. That's how my mind works.、Um, also, when I hear something I don't like,、um, I try to do it myself. So I get, I can, I get to kind of see why it exists.、Um, so, when I was listening to live music, there w a s a few like, pet peeves that kept bothering me. One of them was、um, all the trap instrumentals, all the 808. And stuff like that. So I really didn't like, I still don't like that.、Um, I think a lot of instruments in this album sound boring because I was trying to、uh, um, replicate and imitate that in term, instead of like do, doing my own thing. And the second thing is, I heard a lot of autotune, which、uh, I, don't, I don't actually have anything specific against autotune.、Um, I just would rather hear their actual voice. I would let, just rather hear their raw voice. It's not that the, the autotune kind of ruins it. I just, Would, if I had the choice, I would rather just not, not hear it. You know, I would rather hear the singer be out of key、um, than hear the auto tune effect on it. So I thought, well, I should make an album where I do these things. So I get to, at least I get to understand why they do it. Because you know, if so many people do it, there's gotta be a purpose to it. There's gotta be a reason why they do it.、Um, so my original concept was like, I would do, the half of the album would be abrasive trap bangers and half of it would be auto tune singing, emo rap kind of thing.、Um, I, it was gonna be one side, one side thing. It was gonna be two halves.、Uh, and as I was writing the story, I realized it's,、um, going in between, going like jig jig egging between the two of, of the sides made more sense instead of just、um, separating it in a h a r s h w a y like that.、Uh, This is one of those albums where the music concept and the story concept were like separate at first. The story that I'm telling here was originally, like I said, a novel that I was writing. 
and I, as I was making this album, you know, trying, kind of trying to make some of the music, I realized that the story uh, fit with the concept. So, you know, we had two characters and all that. In the, in the novel, it was just the two different, from the perspectives of the two characters, but by making it so that each of the characters has the, uh, or like this musical aesthetic to them, it defines uh, them even further. And I just thought it made sense. So I think the first song I had written was uh, Graveyard. It's graveyard, and it didn't have anything to do with this story concept. Um, so almost all of these, these I added in retrospect to the story, um, including the character that's introduced here. It's kind of awkward. Um, but I really like this song, so I just wanted to put it in the album. This is, I think, one of my best songs that I have written. Um, and it, it ended up being crucial to how the whole John side sounds. Because of the combinations of uh, auto tune and vocoders, I ended up doing the the extra first song I ended up written writing for the was the merger of these mu- musical and story concept was and hero, um, which o- also only had the lyrics for a while. The actual beat to and hero was one of the uh, last things I got I got to make. Um, took a while to get the beat for this line. Um, so I wrote the lyrics and I was like, uh, then at that point when I, I was finished writing the lyrics for this, I, I had the whole story in my head. It was just a matter of writing on the lyrics. And apparently that takes a long time. Um, I'm bad at writing lyrics and I take a long time writing lyrics. Um, it's just not something I can just do. With making just music and melodies and, um, harmonies and making arrangements, I can shred out a song in like 15 minutes. But if I, uh, if you told me to, you know, come up with, with the words through the notes, you know, I have to take like I take days, Luis. Um, I think uh, I think uh, fire. I think the lyrics to fire took me two, three weeks. I mean, that's nothing with pain and lead. It took me like five, six months for me to come up with all of this shit. It's probably my best verse, lyrically. Um, I keep going back like between like thinking this is like the best album I ever made and the worst album I ever made. Um, it's n- it's never in between. Right now, I'm kind of in the process of going out from thinking stories to kind of appreciating it better again. But I'm I'm sure I go back um in a week or so. So I have to talk about it right now because right now I'm I'm I kind of like how how uh, this turned out. Yeah, this album is very hard for me to talk about because I figured out ha- a way for me to be personal in my music without like talking about my real life. I realized that I don't really like talking about my life. I've done that in a few albums before. Um, I just, I just don't like doing it. I feel kind of not uncomfortable. I just try to feel weird about it. It doesn't sit right with me. So um, I I cr- created this fictional story where a lot of it is clearly allegorical to some stuff in my life. Um, and you can think about that. But uh, it's also, it's clearly like fictional. Um, some people didn't think it was fictional. Some people did think I had a uh, sister who killed herself, which was uh, which was uh, weird. But I intentionally named one of the characters John, so you know. <laughs> I I guess that's kind of the, and, and the point. Um, because most of the, these emotions, you know, I did I did go through the emotions and the feelings conveyed here were real and well used to be real. And I just put them into a story. And that's how kind of a story so. So we can talk about the lyrics now. Um, so this song is called Penny Lead. It's obviously like a thing to the Rolling Stones song. song. Um, I actually don't like Rolling Stones. Um, but it's just a great title that I, that I couldn't pass it up. Um, if you notice, all the other songs are one word. Blood Guilt and here is technical one word, like Vigilante Face Window, they're all one word. That was like a thing I'm going for. Then with the last two songs, I need to and take care of myself that it, it breaks the convention. But I guess now that the first song is also that, it's the first song, um, <laughs> that, that's not really a convention anymore, but hey, it's too good of a song title to pass it up. The first lyric is, get a questionnaire, then you paint it red. Um, this, this first verse, I don't think it's that good, but it does a lot to establish the character. So first off, it's, it talks about questionnaires and class. Um, but this is clearly like a young person, right? When, it, when she's talking about a questionnaire, you mean, they, she means like a grade report. And you know, a grade report is marked with a red marker. Because that's what it means, a painted red. 
I'm an extraordinary at feigning dead. Um, this is a metaphor, like, as, like, you know, she, she sleeps through class a lot. Because she just doesn't, doesn't give a shit about it. That's the kind of thing I was describing here. Every day, the same lights, same class, same people again. Like, the same fight, same glass, same needle. Um, I think by glass, you mean it's like a window. A window is like, often, kind of like a, it eventually becomes like a big important metaphor. Um, a same needle, I think. I think this is probably metaphorical. I don't think she actually uses needles. Um, and these are the rhyme, the same nights, pain, gas, tame, and There's a lot of lyrics here, just, just, I just put it there because they rhyme. Um, I don't think that's literally a big deal. Um, throughout the entire duration of me writing this album, I had the website rhymezone.com. Was it rhymezone.net? It's one of the two. Um, I had that website, uh, beside me. Now, I don't think it's literally a, like a, like a big, big deal to have this, this, um, thesaurus or is it a thesaurus i think it's a thesaurus um with you or like a dictionary with you um i, th- I don't think that's a problem at all um it just has to make sense i mean these are all like evocative kind of edgy imagery which i i think fits with the tone of the song so i i put it in i guess something never changed just the weapon that is oh shit. okay so this this part this flow um it took me forever to get it right it's so hard to say even right now, I'm like struggling with it. Um, just the weapon that is strange. Um, this is like the first allusion to like this. This li- li- little couplets are uh, the first allusion to like self harm. I don't really talk about, a lot about self harm. Like I'm very blatant about you know the topic of suicide and fucking like, d- jumping off a window or like you know hanging yourself. Like those are very evocative, direct images I use. Um. Because I think about it a lot. But I've actually never harmed myself before. It's not really something I can talk about with, with like confidence. Um, so I just make allusions to it because, you know, I mean, I, it's kind of unavoidable, uh, unavoidable topic. If you're gonna write a character who's very depressed, you know, and, and he's suicidal, you have to talk, also talk about self harm. It's like a thing. Um, usually people go through that first, you know, it's like a step. I just went, me personally, I went straight for the suicidal tendencies, you know? I didn't even start with self-harm. <laughs> That's not funny. Um, Toss empathy out the drain. Mark apathy on my veins. I can mark it on my veins. Like, it's, it's like cutting yourself. Yeah, it's like, like that, that's the extent of my imagination when it comes to her farm. Like, I don't, I don't really want to talk about it if I don't really know what it, what it feels like, what it's like to go through with it. Um, because even, if, even though this is fiction, you know, I, I mostly want to just stick to what I know. Um, which, which is obviously one thing to kill yourself. This is the, something I very much know well. <laughs> um, so a, a funny thing, when I first wrote this uh, line, it was apathy marked on my veins. So it was touch empathy at the drain, apathy marked on my, my veins, which obviously didn't make li- li- rhyming sense. Like it's toss empathy at the drain, mark empathy at the drain, right? It's like that's that's how the rhyme works. But it's, for some reason, my brain didn't go go there when I first wrote it. I had to, I had to change it while recording it. Nothing about it is insane. People never change. What's the deal with everyone and their problems? All their tantrums, I can understand their conundrums. Sick rhymes. Um, I think I actually came up with these without, even without rhyme zone. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, this character clearly, um, it doesn't really understand the world, doesn't understand the people around her. She has trouble empathizing with other people. Maybe she's autistic. Um, maybe she's like borderline psychopath. I don't really make that clear. Um, it might just be that she was born in a shitty place where, you know, people are shitty to her, so that's the reason why she can't empathize with them, because it's just shitty people being shitty. I mean, that, that could be an option, you know. Um, I don't really try to talk about the systemic reasons as to why one would go through stuff like this. I just kind of t- talk about what, what it's like to feel like. Because, I mean, if I'm going to talk about, like, the systemic um, connotations and implications of, um, mental depression I'm, I'm gonna have to fucking write a whole fucking essay you say so this is the first time she's talking about the you all the songs talk about the you they are almost written like a letter uh, you say faith you got to learn to suppress oh yeah in the in the song i say faith you you say you said faith you got to learn to suppress that's how i say it 
<laughs> it's, it's it's suppressed, but of course, that that doesn't affect the flow. Um. So in the next line, we know what who you is. Um, brother is the process. You gotta tell me how they feel. Um, it's it's a, it's your brother. Um. So because this is like a first song, I have to make a lot of things clear right off the get go. So when she's talking about you, I like in the next line, I just say it's it's, it's her brother. Um, maybe you can like, maybe you hear it and go. Maybe she's using brother as like a general term. But in the next song, um, in the next song, the narrator also talks about the sister. So you know, it's like a good thing you you can kind of figure it out. It's almost like a musical, you know. I make a lot of information and facts. Available from um, you know, from the gateway snap. Um, like oh, this this whole album is kind of obtuse and hard to understand. But in terms of like, I I think I did my best to try to like make the narrative like be clear. You know, it just goes by so fast that you have to like pay attention. Tell me how they feel. Tell me what is real. Tell me what to care. Yeah. Tell me how to feel. Yeah. And it's just kind of edgy. Um, this uh, this album is quite edgy, and I make it clear in this first song. Uh, and uh, a fear I had w- was that people would take it as immature or whiny. Um, so far, people have haven't really told me that. Um, I mean, this is literally a seven year, a depressed seven year old girl. Obviously, she's gonna be edgy and you know whiny. That's what. That's the only emotion she knows how to express. It's just rage and hatred. Like, how else is she gonna spin this? She's not gonna have the mature know how to deal with this stuff. She's just fucking mad that the world is shitty, being shitty to her. Like, what else is she gonna say? <laughs> um. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of supposed to be mature, but I guess that's not really a defense. More like just a purpose. Um, I, by the way, I love the scream I do here. I wish you could hear it, it better. I would like play the actual song. Um, maybe I put it in in editing. I don't think I'll do that actually. The album is kind of not not good good with uh listening to on the background. Maybe I'll get the instrumentals. Uh. Yeah, actually, this song was um I named the project for how they feel because this is the first little little bar that I came up with as I was making the beat. So it was this is called how they feel. Yeah, but I named it thing that. Um, someone told me this um this this the chorus section reminds that of a uh, of a Radiohead song. I don't remember which one. I guess there's a Radiohead song where it just, it just like moans. <laughs> <laughs> um. This 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 is kind of a weird chorus, but uh, so we go to the second verse now, and we we've been going for nineteen minutes now. Um, that's bad. This is bad. I'm gonna take like a whole fucking hour to do this. Um, I need to go to the bathroom to lip. Uh, this, this second verse it has a lot. It's like a whole different. St- it's like basically a contained story in the second verse. This is a story of the first time I saw someone die. I kind of wanted the song to be just this verse so that I could start the album with this l- first line. I really like this line. My counselor, Miss Sissy, she never lied. So, uh, again, it's kind of like a musical. When I introduce a character, um, I immediately establish what their defining characteristic is, which is that she never lies. That's like the thing. S- and C... There's a lot of um kind of hidden lines here, like me sissy, she, see. <laughs> it's like I'm trying to be fucking clipping, <laughs> but it's, it's kind of shallow. Um, when your job is lying to kids for a living, there's an existential threat to your being. Um, I don't know if this is actually how counselors are. There's this meme on Twitter where you talk to your ther- therapist, therapist, and their therapist. And at the end, you meet the final boss. That's like a meme like that. Um, so yeah, she's clearly she's not like in the mental capability to actually tell, advise kids on what to do. But that's like her, her job. She has to do it. Um, she drink, she drink, I cry, and escape for us all. It's clearly she's not a um um responsible person if she's drinking in front of a seven year old, um, as she's crying, um. Knowing when to say anything was not a tough call. We share the same blood guilt. Okay, boo. Um, I, this word is kind of weird, right? But it's, it's also the title of the next song. Um, a life of two hermits. Even when, even when wordless, 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 
we could make a Valdict. Ooh, that's a good rhyme. I think I got that from Rhyme Zone. <laughs> um, so yeah, clearly they feel like a kindredship. Um, between the two of them, it's like a bond they're making. Um, and I would say what you said, John. So now she's like, kind of, talking about how she told, um, Miss Sissy about about John. You know, this character, other character. You say so. This is what John told her. You know, I know everything is wrong. This isn't where you belong. Can bear to see you like this. I'll make sure you ain't lifeless. So you know. Kind of trying to reassure her, but uh, face response is, you know, do not kid me. You could never fight this. Um, so she thinks he doesn't know, you know, what it's like. You know, she thinks he's making like light of it. Uh, she doesn't. She doesn't feel like she can. You know, um, uh, it's the, she doesn't feel like he can be there by her side when it matters, right? Or like she doesn't really trust him. Uh, finish my story. So she, she, she told her uh, life, life story. Then the war stopped. She would then, she, you know, the counselor would then go on. The mic was dropped. So now, and now like, it's, it's, all, all has loose. Um, <laughs> this, this is now a story about, uh, about the teacher, right? Um, forced out her house, nothing but a degree. She became a teacher at just 20. Um, I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna admit that this is at it is at just twenty. The whisper that I do, it's a it's a thing that I got from Hamilton. Um, and I don't actually remember the a line. I mean, but it, it was like Alex, Alex went quick. That's a, a part like that in the first song, right? Yeah, I got it from Hamilton. Hamilton, I like I like the uh, songs in Hamilton. Okay, they're good songs. Um. Christina, so this is the same character as Miss Sissy. This is just a, this is what the kids call her. Um, because obviously she, they kind, I think they know that she is kind of like a, like a, um, <laughs> not a very confident person. That's the impression she gives to the kids. But Christina didn't believe in her mother's God. Banished from her lot, that reminded, uh, reminded me of, of myself a lot. I reminded of myself, of, actually, there's no me when I, when I say it. Um, I really like this rhyme. This lot and lot rhyme. This is fucking awesome. Like, I, I'm really proud of this. I mean, <laughs> uh, it's not even from Rhyme Zone. Hell yeah. Um, so I wish I could talk a little more about, like, religion in this song. I, I mean, in this album, I, w- I wish I talked more about that. Um, because obviously the concept of blood guilt is from the Bible. Um, and this is a lot. There's a lot of you know, justice through one man. So there's there's some Christian Christian um things going on because Chris, Christianity thinks suicide is a sin. So um, I think it's kind of implied that you know this whole all all the characters are kind con, kind of were raised um under Christianity, and uh, that's kind of why they're so self-deprecating about um their feelings about suicide. It's not just because you know society um sons them is they were literally taught that if they have these feelings. They're gonna go burn in hell. I mean, <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so this this is kind of an interesting bit that I never really go go more into. If I ever make a, a book out of this story, um, I probably go more into that. I talked about how she couldn't handle the pressure. Neither of us can measure something like pleasure. She would fucking vomit. The sound of a stanza. My panic attack was merely the intro, shouting in unison, chanting a mantra, Cover your face and open every window. <laughs> you have to clap it. You have to clap it like a, like a tweet. <laughs> I don't even know if you heard that. Um, yeah, th- this line was just something I wrote for this song, but it ended up becoming like super important to like the whole album. I, I keep repeating this. So, you know. So I I can't really talk about the, what cover your face open every window may, means until like I go all the way to like um um window it's song sex um but I think cover your face is like you know like you cover your face because you're you're ashamed you're you're afraid of of other people you don't want to want them to see how you feel you you know you you put on a ma- mask 
metaphorically, you know, um, and open every window. It's kind of like you, you, you kind of feel suffocating. I think that that's something I um compare depression to a lot. It feels like you're suffoc. It, it feels like there isn't enough air. It feels like like it, it almost feels claustrophobic. Um, when you're going through it, um, and that's why you have to open the window to to let the air, air in, I guess. Um, but also open a, opening a window has another implication. Um, if you are you know in a building that's high enough, you know you, you can and open open the window and jump out. So that's another implication that I talk about. <sighs> she said to me, "How she wanted to save me." I said, "No worries." Listed what she gave me. So, uh, this is, this, this person means a lot to fate if she's like, if she's really like, like fate is really invested in this person now. Like, she's like, no worry, like, she's trying to actually reassure the teacher back, like, you know, listing what she gave to fate, like, like, like just, just before she was like, how, tell me how they feel. I don't, I can't understand their conundrums. She understands exactly what Christina's conundrum is because it is the same as hers. Then she said for all her life, she wanted to die and she never lies. She never fucking lied. Like, you know, when, when she says this, like, even Faith, I don't think, told of Christina that she's wanted, that she's suicidal. I think she just said how, how fucked up her life is. And that was it, you know. So that this is something the teacher brought up, and you know, Faith is like, "Oh shit, she's not kidding." After school, we met our eyes in a crosswalk, had a smile. In um, I mean, Christina has a smile, something that can't be undone. Couldn't dare stop her. I tried to turn my head, but all my cheeks were already painted red. Um, so paint now painted, painting it red is, is blood as the obvious uh, implication when you read your, read the, the title of the song. Tell your Andrew, I want to fucking kill myself. This, um, the, this, this part, it, tell me how they feel and I want to fucking kill myself. This is the only things I, I had in mind. I had actually written when I, when I made the beat. Then for like five months, I had to write all the rest of these. So this that one song took me twenty minutes, and that, that one song took really took me out. I think I need I I think I need a break. I think uh, oh, I think I need to go to the bathroom. So I just edit this out, and we're back. So we get to blood guilt. Um, I feel like if this was a normal album, this would be the first song because this is clearly like a really good song. Um, and Penny Light is more like. Kind of hard to listen to, kind of more experimental, I guess. But uh, I li- I'm really proud of the uh, transition here. It 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 goes from this crazy "I want to fucking kill myself" song to blood guilt. Um, I think this is one of the best like song to song on on transition I've done. Obviously, there isn't a transition at all actually because all the uh, all the face songs flow into one another and all the John songs flow into one another. Um, that's also one one thing I knew um when I came up with the album concept. Um, it's the end of April. It's still hard for me to lay still. Um, but I talk about April a lot. I was gonna make like four an important number throughout the entire thing, but I didn't really get to um just, just get the opportunity to talk about numbers a lot. So four, um, if you if you watch anime, if you watch anime, you might know this. When like when in like East Asia, um, four is like an like an like an unlucky number because the uh the word for dead, dead in Chinese is pronounced the same way as four in um in Korean in in Japanese and Chinese, so you know all the ones that matter, of course. <laughs> uh so, so four is not like a good number. So in, in like Korea, you, you go to an elevator and instead of the fourth floor button, it does an F. There's an F instead of a four, which is, it sounds funny because press, press F to pay respect. <laughs> but yeah, um, we don't like using four for some reason. I wanted to uh, invoke that imagery, April four, you know, I wanted to, um, release this. In for in the fourth of April, but obviously that didn't pan out. So yeah, 
Uh, swarming like an ant here, the fluids of a killer. Uh, maybe I'll just go through these more quickly. Um, generation of curses. Generations of curses uh, stored in my veins, but I just want to sleep. Die with you together. So that's kind of uh, the uh, concept of this blood guilt, right? That it, that mental health is. I mean, it is kind of like a thing that mental health is inheritable, you know, like mental illnesses, mental disorders, you know. I think particularly bipolar is quite inheritable. It's it's like a. It might even be a DNA or anything. I think I don't think there are enough, enough studies, but there are like st um stats that say you know. Um, people with bipolar and their children is more likely to have have the same conditions. Well, I'm I'm more or less talking about like a more abstract notion, like this more abstract notion of sin. Um, that this is like a cursed household. Um, which is obviously not, not like a thing. Um, but that's like the justification this character is making, you know. The reason, you know, all the men in our family kill, kill, um, kill themselves is because of this blood guilt that, that's flowing through us. That's kind of the justification they're making. So 30 years ago, grandma would lock mom in a shed. And then 15 years later, mom locked you out of her head. Um, so you know, again, a you. This, this you is um, clearly fate from the previous song here so this is a different narrator um, with a different voice and a different way of spelling things Homestuck <laughs> Homestuck Psychomantis <laughs> um, I thought I could be better so I cut you off instead um, then I find my hands all red from your blood um, so he feels responsible um, and I, if you if saw the we uh, uh, pay attention in the last song. You know, he, uh, he's he was trying to like, he was trying to like look out for her, but you know, he clearly feels, feels like he, he didn't do enough. Um, well, could you br blame me for what I've been taught? You know, like it's it's almost like he believes in this blood guilt thing because that's what his is uh, you know like the older people in his family told them. It's almost like um um what remains of Edith Finch. If you played that uh, video game before. That's a similar um concept, right? but instead of a sin in that in that game, it's a family curse. You know, um, I couldn't help it. Fate, uh, Joseph Anderson has a great video about that game. By the way, uh, I always learn from things. It's how I'm made. Um, so I'm trying to like, I think I'm rhyming fate with made. I'm also rhyming blood with thought, but it's just not clear because it goes to a different verse. It's kind of weird. Um. That's what's fucked up. I can't even admit it was all my fault. You know, he's, 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 again, he's very being at the beginning. All of these characters are quite insufferable, actually, <laughs> if you think about it. But that's that's how it is. It's the end of April. Said it's a matter of will. So this is actually I I wanted to really talk about this line. Said it's a matter of will. So what he means is he he said this to fate. You know. He'll tell fate, you know, it's all about, you know, control. And it's all about just, if you wait it, you know, if you wait it, it to be, you can, you can be happier and like, you can, things can turn out better. Like, that, that's kind of what, he, he, that's why seemingly he told her and which just made things worse. Um, so, so this is actually a quite, um, ma malicious bit of, um, information given here. Um, because throughout the entire, uh, you know, album and like from, from fate's side, it's hard to understand what John really did that, you know, was so bad. You know, it's just being a brother. And from John's side, you know, he's being so self-deprecating and, you know, so f exaggerating it that you can't really trust what he's saying. So I, I think this is one line that uh, that is easy to miss, you know. I, I mean, telling that to a depressed person that it's just a matter of where that's, that's pretty fucking horrendous. Like, you should, you should never do that. Like... <laughs> like that, you're just telling them to stop having the dep depression. Um, it's, that's not how it works. Um, committing sinful blood guilt, never pardoned by his victim, just as through one man, all men were made sinners. Oh God, my throat, throat is hurting now.
So I'm not sure if everyone's like familiar with Christian vocabulary, but this is like a Christian thing. So in Christianity, they say that Adam, um, the first man, you know, committed sin, and thus all men that were born from him are sinners. Like that's that's the thing. So what happened was, you know, because Adam was like the first first man, he was like the first man. He was the he was the perfect like person. He was the he was made as a perfect man so no other like humans could you know um pardon humanity of this crime except for another like per- perfect man so that was seemingly jesus christ so when people say jesus christ you know absorbed us of our sins that's what uh, they mean Be- because jesus christ died for our sins you know now the the that's the that blood guilt that was um passed down from adam is gone because jesus died and he now it's like even i guess you know it's like it's it's the it's the uh it's that kind of concept so uh that's that's kind of like, if you don't know that if you don't know what that what this means it's kind of hard to understand how this, this is relevant so ju- just as um you know the original sin was passed down from adam i mean he he thinks like there was some some sort something that was passed down from his his generations of family that is you know that is just guilt that is that is this sin and he can ne- they can never be pardoned they can never be you know forgiven so right, that, that's kind of oh it's again it's, i don't really bring up religion a lot um again and uh, throughout this album which i wish like, i did but uh um, I had a dream with you as an hero. I think I talk about an hero in the in the song called an hero. Um, so you would rise up like an earthly widow. So this like the image I'm thinking of is that like from the ground, like a like a statue made out of dirt comes out. That's in the shape of faith. Like that's what he's saying in in this dream. Reminded me of a tale father told his, his note. Um, so later I talk about how their dad. Killed himself, and I think that's in Blood Guilt Part Two when Dad died. Um, obviously I have a dad that too, but he didn't kill, kill himself. Um, so by his note he means like the suicide note. And then in his dreams, his his father would blame him, and his his father and his father the same thing, I mean, it's all, all the same thing. But in his dream, it wasn't his his father that came out; it was fate. And all she did was just stare down. You know, I wonder what that dream means. You know, I don't know what it means. I mean, it's a dream, and it's, it dreams don't really mean, mean much. Um, it's the end of April. You chain me down so I kneel, crimson down my face fears. You require my blood until then. This inherited sin demands for ransom. So, um, particularly Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, consider this concept of blood guilt quite important. You know, it's mo- almost, almost exclusively uh, terminology Jehovah's Witnesses use. They refer to Jesus as a ransom for humanity. You know, that's that's how uh, they that's the metaphor that the allegory they use. So there's an also a uh, actually let's, let's, let's finish reading this. I say this far too late, though I'm sure you've heard it before. Sister, please stay with me forevermore. So she says, sister. So this is this their siblings. Um, so I, I guess I can talk about uh, this a little bit. Um, I don't want to go in, into it, but in Jehovah's Witnesses, with Jehovah's Witnesses, the the term of blood guilt is also used in another context. Um, which is that like, so basically, when you when you see someone die, you and you see when you seeing someone dying, and you don't like do anything to help them, um, you are also personally responsible for you know that person dying. And they call that a blood guilt, you know, as in you are partially responsible that their blood is on your hand. That's like a thing. I think that's a thing from the Bible. You know, like it's, I think some people call it the Good Samaritan law. So that that's also like a uh, like another u- usage of that word, or that terminology. Um, uh, of course, John was was seeing faith suffer, and you know, he didn't clearly didn't do do enough, but. Like, well, could, should he have been, you know, be entirely responsible for the mental health of one young girl? I mean, like, I, I, yeah, he was his, her brother, but like, um, 
I, I, it's, it, it's not entirely murder, right? But uh, even though he told us some pretty bad things, um, I don't, I don't think you can ever call it a, a murder that he, he's entirely responsible. It's a, it's a complicated thing. Oh, boys, and hero now. Um, <laughs> this song, this song, I don't, I don't credit it because I'm afraid I get sued. This is, this is a song called Deep Shadows by Little Anne, I think, is her name. It's an old, like, 60s song. So, you should, should uh, Google her. Um, she actually has a quite in into it fascinating story. Um, but I just found this in a YouTube playlist called, like, 60s fucking ragtime songs or something. Um, and I just thought the lyrics made sense. He doesn't know just how I feel. Nobody cares. They just don't seem to understand, you know? I to deal with people and their problems. I can understand their conundrums. It's like the same thing. Sorry if I'm like, I'm getting quieter and quieter. It's because my throat is like fucking burning right now, but I have to do this. Uh, mother tells me I'm the fucked one. Uh, this is one of the first ever lines I came up with for this album, you know. Same she couldn't get the locked one. Thankfully, I'm what you call the work one. So then Faye can go and cock one and fucking suck one. <laughs> she was a bad mouth, huh? Um, I think I wrote this and I had tweeted something. I tweeted something about how I made the song. I, I made, I wrote a bar where I rhyme, um, fuck with cock and suck. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, the flow in this is kind of rudimentary too. Um, Lord of the Dice wasn't destined to be nice, so I spread out on my vice. Um, I read of vice. So a huge inspiration for this album is actually the song um album uh, Section Eighty by Kendrick Lamar. So it's one of the a few um lab uh, Kendrick Lamar's discovery if you was with the some of the few lab albums I had heard at the time. And there's a uh, in in that album I think it's kind of a concept album where it's about kind of like an anthology story of a few characters speaking from their perspective and the few of these songs are in parentheses called you know uh kisa's song tanisha's song or his his vices her vices so obviously I'm, i named this face song and i in a infinite john song because of that um a game game of kind of mice where i'm the only hunted if someone did want me um i wouldn't be this wanted this is good this one's good what wanted want me want want oh man <laughs> again like right now i'm in the state of mind that this this album is pretty good but <laughs> um my business more than my business feel body hurry haven't had time to worry feel it share my pain with you kill it or care even a little will do um, I've been taking the back seat. So this is actually, uh, I, how I meant this is, she's like, she, she's in the, like, the back row of a class, like, in the, the seat arrangement. That's what I mean. She, she sits in the way back row. So, so like, you know, most people, like, most people don't even notice that she's there or not, you know, or fight for herself, of course. Um, um, but I don't think that's how people interpret this because backseat usually means another thing. But yeah, you know, yeah. The flow in this is kind of interesting. It happened again that week. I've been taking the back. I, I don't know how I came up with that. It just kind of uh, I became like that. They told me I was lacking. They didn't get me laughing. You know. So now no now, now kids are bullying. bullying or, um, this hard bit I was I added while I was decoding focus. It was like an ad lib, and I decided to keep it in. Uh, uh, never told them they had to. When I cried for help, they didn't know I meant you, you know. When she was, uh, uh no, calling for help, um, she was actually thinking about her brother, her, uh, um, John. Of course, he was too late. Um, I felt hopeless. Good thing I was loveless. But you ended up before, like, before it happened, she would have killed herself. Um, um couldn't take it anymore. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I'm not really good at like coming up with rap hooks. Like when I come up with catchy chorus lines, it's usually really the melody that's really keeping it strong. But with rap hooks, 
it's, it's purely like rhythm and of course there's intonation and pitch and everything but not, not in like a melodic scale sense right um still a melody but still you know doesn't use a scale um so it, it, it's kind of hard for me to come up with lap hooks um but this is this is like one many could depress at my own pace this was this was let into another time like when i i just discovered that i might like be suffering from bipolar um it was like it was around like mid 2018 um I'm not sure I'm fate is bipolar. I think she might just be saying this, but maybe. Um, setting up my own demise in my space. Uh, don't care me because once they've got the info, I know they'd be telling me I am a hero. So this end hero thing. Okay, let, we have to talk about. It. We have to talk about the end hero thing. Okay, we have to. This this is unavoidable. <laughs> um, so end hero is like a four chan term. It's usually derogatory. It's it's a sarcastic term. It's just how they refer to people who kill themselves. They call call them an, a, a hero and hero, you know, because they think they only did it, you know, for a, attention seeking. That's like the thing. I know this term because of the uh, the try of the Golden Witch song, um, called "Fallen to Pieces." It's from um her album "Gay and Dead." Um, which is great, by the way. One of the greatest fucking album titles of all time, "Gay and Dead." Uh, um, and uh, in the in the song "Falling to Pieces," this is the fucking line. Um, I have to I have to pull it out. Uh, I admire not heroes, but any hero. My life is a scene from Apocalypse Zero. Um, my strife is obscene and is not endearing. When I sing, people scream and demand that I go. <laughs> It's it's so fucking iconic. <laughs> um, I, I just this line I admire not heroes but any hero. <laughs> um, I also quote this directly in window. You know, um, it's such a fucking great line. Uh, so I I I mean I don't I don't go to quote channels. So I don't really know how people use it. I just um so this is like a, I guess me reclaiming. You know, this is my reclamation of the term any hero. Of course, um, killing yourself is not something to be desired or adm- admired. Um, I I hope I make that clear. I hope I make it clear that I don't think it's a cool thing to do that. I, I hope people don't do it. <laughs> I hope people don't kill themselves after listening to this album. <sighs> Sink into sorrow and cry with the pillow. The sacrifice widow freezing an absolute zero. That's when it passed the intro. Tell me that you tell them that I'm a hero. <sighs> Bruise on the body and scarred on the mind. Now you know why only wear long sleeves. Um, this is another self harm illusion. It's kind of a it's kind of a trope, right? That you know, characters who harm themselves, um, they wear long sleeves. It's like a thing. Again. I don't really know a lot about it, so I only I can only really lead to secondhand experiences and fictional representation. Uh, leaving marks on me with whatever I can find. Fucking myself is what relieves this pain. Can be kept sane. Um, spare my brain, cause I am to blame. Spare my brain is uh, it's kind of like another like gory imagery, but I think it probably just means like you know, just, you know, vomiting all this out. Uh. When that bat hit me, holy shit! So they're, they're hitting her with a bat. I, I didn't, I didn't even realize how how fuck, kind of fucked up that is. It's not even that just they're beating her up. They're hitting her with a fucking bat. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I knew for sure it would hurt, but I smiled as the tears fell down at my throat. Red bleeding on my left eye, blue sucking up the right eye. If to die was this colorful, I wouldn't even ask why. Um. And it's kind of like uncomfortable to read out loud, you know. Um, it was a beautiful, but okay. So this fucking part, both verbally and phys- both verbally and physically. Okay, so it's 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 a it's like a bunch of B's and V's in a row. Um, so it's fucking how impossible for me to pronounce this. Both verbally, <laughs> holy shit. Yeah, also you have to say the very fake in this part too. Um, yeah, I don't know why I wrote this. I don't know why I wrote it that way. Uh, I could have just to switch out the words but I didn't um two different kinds of pain inflicted on me simultaneously <sighs> yeah. when I was left alone I couldn't stand on my own 
um, when he came to pick me up, you know, I guess this, if he comes to pick her up from school, um, and he found her like this, I thought to myself, maybe this is enough. Uh, you yelled, why didn't you run? So this, this is not what you tell a kid that's being bullied. You don't tell her, why didn't you run away? Like, like you, you think she didn't try that? <laughs> Like, you think she didn't learn because she wanted to get beat up? Maybe she was scared? She's just, she's fucking seven years old? Like, it's, this, this not, it's not why you need to tell them. So again, like, if you think about it, what John's saying here is pretty fuck, fucked up. Like, that's why she feels so bad, or like, in that, in that respect. I mean, even he, like, he was like 12, you know? Um, he's five years older than now. So he, he's still 12, like, he's still like a fucking kid. Um, like it's it's two two kids who need to uh, look out for each other, but you know, that's their kids. Um, I I wanted to make clear that you know these are like young children, and the young children go through this too. Like I was the most depressed when I was face age. Face is a pretty actual like rep a representation of how I thought about the world and myself when I was seven. You know, I just fucking hated everything and wanted to kill myself. Um, like my difference with fate is that I didn't kill myself. <laughs> Um, that's an interesting thing too. So like, when you listen to Blood Guilt, it's clear that fate is dead. That this takes place in this, this song, John said takes place in the future where she's dead and she killed herself. So it's interesting that you, you know, now go to the entire album knowing that. If you just listen to Face side, you don't know that. If you just listen to Face side, you, you don't know that she will kill herself at the end. But if, because I selected the album so that John's songs are also interspersed in the track list, you know. It's almost like um it's like sometimes, you know, in, in a book, you know, the narrator will spoil something to you. Like they'll just tell you like, Oh, that's the killer. And now that you know that, um whenever they do some do certain stuff, like it literally contextualizes that thing because you know that they are you know the mother or something. Um so you know you know that this character is gonna die at the end. Um, yeah, John, John dies at the end. This, that's literally a book that does that in the title of the book. <clears throat> um, yeah, it's, it's a coincidence that he's also named John. Um, she says, I was just having fun. Kind of, kind of creepy, right? But also kind of edgy and, uh, kind of sad. Um, but you didn't think that was, that's why I was stunned. Or should I put, forgot the apostrophe? Oh no! <laughs> Horrors! <laughs> uh, you wipe my tears with a rosy handkerchief. Um, I had a rosy handkerchief. I used to have one. I think I lost that. Um, I still had it when I wrote this album. Um, so I can't stand you looking like this. You told your sis. Stem chief, this sis. The rhymes, the fat rhymes. <laughs> uh, please promise me you won't hurt yourself or let yourself be hurt. You um, so as you can see, even his, his typing quirk is even preserved in this dialogue section. <laughs> Homestuck! <laughs> uh, like, 50% of people watching this won't even get that. Um, couldn't answer because I didn't want you to be hurt. So I rhymed heart with heart, and they mean the same things, not even with lot and lot. You know, you know. <laughs> I just did that. I thought it made, I mean, it sounds good. Um, so, uh, cover your face and open every window. Could I rise like a mythical hero? Um, you know, like, a, like an artly widow. Um, kind of, it kind of rhymes. That's just like a palace there. Kind of a party. Also known as a corpse party. <laughs> um, I, I was gonna, like, do a, I can't think of anything from Ghost Party. You're like, it's been like 10 years since I, I played it. Um, so I also know as a Ghost Party. Um, crying a widow. Don't have the guts yet. That's why my wind's slow. So this is from a Kanye West song. This is from, um, Dark Fantasy, from My Beautiful Dark Twist Fantasy. Um, in, in the song he says, um, let me just, um, in the song he says, I think, oh shit. My bravery in my Diablo. Um, too many orcs on your team. That's why you win slow. 
Let's see what Genius.com says about this uh, genius line of lab lyrics. <laughs> um, Kanye quadru- qu- quadruple entendre a al- lot. Um, Kanye creates a homophone on Winslow and Winslow. Steve Urkel is, a, is the northern neighbor of the Winslow family in the hit 90s show Family Matters. Uh, this is also a homophone because it sounds like Winslow, W I N D S, which is why you brought down your window from the past line. Yeah, so I didn't know that. I I, I had no idea about that. I just kn- knew, knew this. I just knew this. I just heard, heard it before, and you know, like I thought, what he was saying was that 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 their wins are low. They like, they don't win a lot. You know, they they lose. Um, so that's what I thought. What I thought. So I recontextualized this, this dumbass fucking Steve Walker family matters reference to don't have the guts yet. That's what my win slow. A win meaning, you know, a successful attempt. So, you know, she does, she doesn't have the guts yet. And that's why she doesn't win a lot. And, uh, I mean, she doesn't have to win a lot. She just has to win once and that's over, right? So yeah, I kind of recontextualized it to uh, be, Kind of ominous, you know, this kind of fucked up lyrics. <sighs> okay, it's vigilante. So we have three songs in, and I'm, uh, Audacity tells me it's one, one hour in. I might have to continue this in an, in another session and stitch it together. Yeah, I, I at least want to get vigilante done. Um, I only have like a few, few more dozen minutes left, I think. And I'm never ever going back home. Gonna lock myself in my own dorm. These regrets I simply don't know. As I smell the crimson scent of hot dog. I don't actually know how hot this smells like. It's just, it's just, it's just limes. Um, maybe I know it's true. Memories come back in view. Can't the animal who's who? Is it you who haunts or me that haunted you? I really like this line. It's good. Um, walk like a vigilante. So walk in this context is just like, you know, just, just literally a, a walk in, you know, like just, he can't sleep. It's, 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 it's about insomnia. So, you know, like a vigilante, he loams the night streets, you know, because he can't sleep. He goes outside and you don't have, you know, nowhere to find me. You don't have to mind me. I think that's just, that's just fine. I'm okay. I'm, I'm kind of, the energy is sucking out as you can see. Outside for the first time in my life. Um, inside I am faking that I'm on. I, mean, I really like the flow in this one. I saw for the first time I'm mad. I'm inside I'm faking the I'm all right. Um, it's kind of catchy. All right, we are back. Um, you might be able to see the clock, but there was a I think two two day gap now. So I'm I'm recording this next week because I had to go. Um, and now the now I have time to record more of this. I might have to record uh, most of this like throughout this week. So we were doing Vigilante. I actually, in that session, I ended up finishing Vigilante. I went on to face, but, uh, I want, I want to talk about some uh, more of this a bit more. So uh, I think we stopped that, you know, don't want to kill myself, don't have the guts. Um, or was it, uh, yeah, don't have the guts. That's why my went slow. <laughs> that's fucking funny. Um, I was gonna say this, this line inside, I'm faking that I'm alright. This is like that Warjack meme. Where he has the mask on and his but he's in but um behind it he's crying. That, that that's exactly it. Um that should be the cover art. Um Am I depressed, you was depressed or just fucking obsessed? So I think I talked about how like all of my characters are kinda obsessed with something. Because it's easier to write a character that way. Um Usually, like, they say a character is one note. They say it's a one note character or they have is one trait or like one stereotype. But I do think most of the time characters are interesting when they have some something they really they are really passionate about, or just are upset or interested in it or fascinated by. Um, I think Faye was obsessed with you know um. It's it's hard. Both of them are very obsessed with that. You know that's the thing they're obsessed about, but in different ways. I think John fears it. Um, I don't think Faye fears it. I mean, everyone fears about that, but like. I think with fate, it's more of a it's more of a fascination and you know wondering what it what it happened, um if if she does it 
and she even straight does to it. Um, my condition's valid validation for addiction that's fiction. Oh man, rhymes. I don't think I even used rhymeson.com for this one. Uh, do I roam the streets wondering where do I have to go? Or am I just looking to repair for my sins? Maybe someone's still hiding, unlike me, they're still fighting. Um, so he's given up, you know, he's lost the will to live. Um, uh, fate and Zon have kind of different kinds of suicidal tendencies, you know. W- with fate, um, her suicidal thoughts are a sort of an act of rebellion in, in her eyes, in her thoughts. Um, to, to her, it's a, it's the ultimate act of taking control over her life. Um, for John, you know, he she just doesn't want to do have to do with any of this life shit. <laughs> that's that's his thing. So never life for being alone. It's my destiny to wander alone. You know? She's very self deprecating. Um, I think like a lot of people seem to prefer John's songs, you know, John's side because you know he has more actual songs like Vigilante, Bloodgate, um, Graveyard. These are actual songs. Fates like songs are more like you know kind of. Pictures like frames, you know, it's it's a fleeting by moment. Um, the John songs also tend to be longer. Uh, but yeah, I I, I find in the, some of these lyrics like insufferable. I, I can't fucking listen to these because of how they're self deprecating. Is with Faye, you know, it's, she kind of embodies a kind of braggadocious attitude that a lot of lappers have, but I turn it into like this. Turning it upside down with this manic, unhinged state that she's constantly in. Which I find more interesting and at least more in, um, fun to record focus for. Um, okay, so lived slash to rip the last pages of your life. It's kind of like an endless jazz thing. Endless jazz, he's like YouTuber, rapper, legend, god. Uh, and uh, he does a lot of that. This uh, he he says a word, and in the lyrics, it he it's two different kinds of words, but pronounced the same way. It's like a, it's like the most advanced form of the broad entendre because they literally sound pronounced the same. Um, with, this is an actual a mistake. It was a rip the last pages of your life. That's that was the actual lyrics. But when I recorded it and started mixing it in a song, it sounded more like lived lived the fast. Live the last pages of your life, and I thought like it bored my sense, so you know, I thought it, I thought it was cool. It was like a happy accident, so I left it in. On the last pages of your life, I'm. This is uh, this is probably the first illusion to the fact that you know the face songs are actual, you know, diegetic letters slash like diaries that she left behind, and he's leading them. It becomes a little bit more uh, clear. Um. Later in the later in the album, Sounds in Blood where Lume is asking you a lie. This part is really fucking hard uh, to to a thing. One scream, got a dream. Come my come my veins blood streams. The blood stream is a very hard word to say in in fastly. Um, the Lemon Demon song, My Trains, <laughs> where, he, where where there's also a <laughs> lyric where he sa- he says blood streams in the rap. That might have been an inspiration. I slow my breath. I actually, in, in the song, I think I omit the eye. Um, because I was actually running out of my breath. Yeah. Hide my face, put your letter back in place. You know. He didn't actually end up ripping it off. It was kind of like, I think, imagining it. And then maybe he, like, dropped something. And that's why, yeah, he got cut himself. Um, I don't think it's like, um, I don't think this, this, this is an illusion to self found. My therapist says I have trauma. How could I go against dogma? You know, you're not gonna go against this therapist. It's kind of, it's kind of taking it chill. Like, okay, I have trauma. I mean, obviously, I knew that. He knew that. He didn't need someone else to tell him that. Um, precisely lived these seven years in a coma. And this is just the probably the first indication. Again, these first few songs, they they. Cram you a lot of information, a lot of narrative information, so you can piece these things out throughout the course of the album. But you know, you, now you can see that it's been seven, like there's a seven year gap between the face side and on side. Um, then I'm thinking maybe it's karma, insomniac, blood test, cardiac RS, cardiac. Okay, these are just they, these are just war bombs. These are just rhymes that I just didn't know. Like this was l- literally. Like low key um temp lyrics. I was I just put these uh, these into a 
this just a gauge the flow and I never came up with better ones, so you know. Vigilantes walk and coalesced. Uh that's a great word, coalesce. Um sleeping and never waking up from my dreams. So I don't sleep no more. When I close my eyes, all I see is you anymore. This is just an imagery that I really wanted to put in the song. You know, he's, he closes his eyes and um, he can't sleep because that's all, all he sees is her face. Um, he lies up and take your earthly form. You know, like an earthly widow. It comes crashing down in beautiful forlorn. I don't know what, I don't even know, I don't remember what this word even means. But it, 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 it sounds cool, doesn't it? I mean, um, <laughs> yeah, forlorn. Of course, of course. Yeah, and that, that's the end of Vigilante. Okay, let's let's m keep moving along. Okay, I, I I wish I can do I could do all of these in the next like twenty minutes. Um, I don't want this to be longer than ninety minutes. So this is face. Yes. Um, this, this is really easy. I'm mean, not easy. It was very hard, but uh, very fun to record. Um, I didn't know I could do like a growl voice with my voice while I ended up doing one in in, in uh, this face thing in this chorus part. Um. It's interesting because in, in the face part, um, all of her, uh, voice is like, you know, pitched up. Her voice's form is pitched up, you know. Um, I did, I did that. Uh, because like, it, it would be kind of hard to distinguish between the characters, you know. In on, on Unpop, I use vocoders, but it was kind of hard to hear. It's, the lyrics are a bit easier to hear in this album. With Unpop, I wasn't really that concerned about, you know, the, the lyrics being, Elizabeth anyway, but with Color This Day, it was kind of important that you kind of could listen to the lyrics. Okay, but uh, but in this in this song, um, you can hear my actual voice. I think in Window you can hear my voice and uh, just normal voice and uh, as background vocals. Maybe you can like you know imagine that as you know John's voice echoing throughout Fate's psyche as she's writing these these down. I've been trying to get better. I I love the fucking flow I do doing this one, okay? I've been trying to get better, but I can handle chatter. By the way, how's the weather? Strand they get mad. It's, this is a very kind of danger flow kind of uh, flow, you know? Danger curry kind of flow. I, did I just say danger flow? <laughs> um, danger, danger curry, big inspiration to this album, you know? Um, mostly because he was an inspiration to try of the Golden Witch. Who is a li my little inspiration when it comes to writing raps? Yeah. Story and they get mad. This, this is kind of more of, you know, her trying to fit in and being very frustrated that she can fit into any social group. Um, no my words, my manners. Let me shatter my tongue with a hammer. I love this imagery. I love this, this fucking sentence. Um, they say choosers can't be beggars. Um, obviously the, the actual, um, phrases, beggars can be choosers, choosers, but, uh, that doesn't rhyme. So I, I changed it around, and I mean, it still kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Um, I mean, the implication of beggars can be choosers, which is that poor people should just shut the fuck up and just uh, never speak out, you know, and it's also the opposite implication that choosers, you know, people who are better off shouldn't concern themselves about, like, poor people. It, you should just go out, you know, don't question it. Consume, consume product. <laughs> Fucker saying can handle my glamour. I think this is kind of like in like self-aware, you know, like this is like a line that uh, if the focus was replaced with the with the N word, this this could be a, a line you could hear in like a you know gang rap gangster rap song. But uh, I think in in this context. You know, she's trying to self-justify herself. I mean, that, that's what I did when I was young. What I did was when I was young, you know, I couldn't fit into anyone with any, with any group. So I, I just convinced myself I'm better than them. I don't need a friend. I don't fucking need a friend. I still kind of say that, that to myself. But, uh, yeah, yeah, I haven't really changed that much. Um, who cares if I lose a head or two? My life or that, yeah, better choose. Um... Don't know who I'm married to, but it's you that I'm writing this letter to. It's now, now she's uh, alluding to the fact that this is a letter she's writing. Um, this so this part, this whole song is uh was inspired by the Daniel Curry song um Sumo from Tattoo. Uh, 
so you could you could you could probably notice that the ref is like note for note identical. I was gonna change a little bit of the note so it wasn't as uh, obvious, but fuck it, let's just say it's a sample, okay? It's a, it's, a, it's a, let's just say it's a sample. This is a so this is also a flow that's left from Sumo. I still don't, and, um, don't remember the lyrics to the original song. Um, because I don't give a fuck about my own life. If it's me or them, I'd gladly give up this fight. So, you know. If, if she could let someone else kill her, she would, she would take them out, you know. But, but, uh, that, that never happens. Okay. Just a different perspective. My mind is being held captive. I think this flow is from another Dendrochrome song. It's another tattoo song. I have to look it up. Um, yeah, the album isn't called Tattoo, it's, uh, it's called Taboo. It's been like a year since I listened to it. Was it in Switch It Up? Oh yeah, it's the verse 2 of Switch It Up. You know, he goes like, uh, how can I see through my lenses when I can't see my who my friend is? You know, it's, it's that kind of flow. It's just a different perspective. My mind is being her captive. Um, yeah. Maybe I'll down some laxative mixture of vodka, bleach, and acid. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how she she could add acid. I'm, I'm I'm not sure if a seven year old kid can have access to acid that easily. <laughs> okay, okay, fate. Okay, bro. Kaldia, kaldia, kaldia. Na 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 na. This this part. This this is weird. This is a. Uh... So I I I swear I hate XXX Tentacion. I hate all of this music, but uh. There was a there was a song he did. There was a leaked song he he did with Kanye West, and he had this kind of flow in it. He goes like Kanye, 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 and I guess that was stuck in my that was stuck in my head. If I just had to put put this in here, I swear I hate that guy. You fucking piece of shit. Um, of course, no disrespect to the dead, but uh, nah, totally disrespect to the dead. Fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> um, just relax, take a deep breath, can be worse than that, you know. I think it can get a lot worse than that, in my opinion. Um, come myself just to know that I'm not gone, snore up, this will be done, don't jump. Um, don't jump part just came up to me, I think, while I was recording, I think, it just came came to my head. It's really good. I, I kind of, uh, you know, repeat it in fire. Um, I think I was gonna repeat uh repeat a lot more throughout the uh, album. Don't jump this this kind of mantra, but yeah, cover your face and you know, open every window is another thing. And I, I can't add more arc worlds, but all I have is this null dull sense of numb, null sense of dumb, <laughs> <laughs> disgusted with who I become. Um, yeah, this is all self-explanatory. Um, in most of these lyrics now I don't have to go go through them because it's kind of obvious. Cause my face is beyond the savior. Uh, now I thought of being dead is better because my face is beyond the savior. Wonder what would happen if I pull the trigger when I couldn't be even more dead or, uh, this is, this, that's a great line in my opinion. Um, yeah, obviously she doesn't have a gun. This is uh, again a metaphorical. Oh, we go to window. Um, window is one of my favorite, probably one of my favorite songs in this album. I think the, it's the only song on face side that I can probably just casually listen to. Um, all the other songs they did like great thing or just fucking, um, cringe worthy, in my opinion. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna I'll come back with some water. Hmm, okay. Um, I think we're back. Uh, we're gonna do window. I actually get kind of a, a bit into it, but then I had to stop, so we're just doing it over again. Window. All my life I tried to get by without a main meaning, but that don't mean I haven't done my fair deal of sinning. We were sinners and the saints, that's what they got to teach him, but I ain't capable of anything but sinning. Um, I think this is the most, um, old school hip hop something kind of, uh, flow here. Maybe, I don't know, I don't listen to a lot of old school hip hop, like maybe like Nas, I don't know. Um, yeah. Uh, I wanted to, you know, I didn't want on to like kind of, uh, one thing I didn't want to do is just kind of beautify or fetishize mental illness or suicide, either like desires, you know. Um, this is not just something you're born with. Um, you know, you don't, you don't come out of someone's room fucked up and broken. It's always about the environment, who, who, who they grow up with, um, what they're given, you know. It's the cars that they have, they, they have to deal with. Um, 
or even fade, you, you know. She, she says, you know, it's not like she, she was born like that, you know. She, uh, all her life she tried to get by. Um, but she now realizes now she can't do, she aren't capable of anything but, you know, being angry. Like, it may, maybe it's too late for her. It's never too late, but, you know, it's, it's, it's a seven year old. That's what she thinks. I'm a rep, just a spec, don't know what is waiting next. This part is actually from another rap I was writing. Um, I think it was for actually for attitude made of influence. I was gonna add the rap to one of those covers and this was a thing. All I know is this ability to put it down in text. You know, um so if if all the face songs is supposed to be diegetic and these are rap that's just written. I mean I mean I mean I don't think I'm very good at writing lyrics, so you know, writing raps. Especially, but I mean, if a seven, if you if, if you are hard that you know these are all written by a seven year old, I mean, you would probably go like, wow, this is pretty good, right? So you know, um, in context of the, this universe, this is supposed to be pretty, you know, like supposed to be you know this talented genius mind, you know, who is you know very mentally unstable. Um, again, that's very e easy to fantasize. That's very easy, to, like. Seven year old uh, fucking depressed girl who is a genius rapper, like, um, like, like you could easily write a story about that that's like completely disgusting and completely misses the point of what mental illness is. And you know, didn't really want to get into that, you know. This is more of a, you know, like a personal journey about her dealing with these, um, issues, these suicidal thoughts. So I write this to you, brother, in hopes of what? Make you feel guilt, maybe that's what I thought. So, like, like her point is to make him feel guilty. Like, he's, he's, she's not showing this. Like, she, she knows that if he ever leaves these, it'll be after she's dead. Because she doesn't want to put this up, you know? She doesn't want, she doesn't want to become like a flat recording artist, you know? She just likes this because that's like, this is the only thing she knows how to do. Um, that she knows that if someone ever sees these, it's either because you know she grew up and you know decided to put them put them out, or because she's dead. Just the more in her mind, the most uh, likely option. Pray like a Buddhist, so my a lazarette for like flow like Oktoberfest. These are kind of uh, weird rhymes. Well, you know, lazarette, you know, pray. These are like more late to bad things. But uh, uh this this line flow like Oktoberfest. This is just a cool little, like, um, um, I wouldn't say pun. Maybe it, it counts as a pun, you know, like Oktoberfest because people drink, it, it flows out, the drinks, they flow. <laughs> now, this is what you would hear in, like, a, um, like a 15 year old SoundCloud rapper song. Like, they would come up with this line, flow like Oktoberfest. Um, never miss. How did I get so good at this? This is one of my favorite moments in the album. When it was just how did I get so good at this? Um, I thought there was another song, uh, another lap song where a lap possessed this. They said, like, how did I get so good at this? Um, but I couldn't find it. I thought it was, um, fucking Libera Me from Hell from Grand Lagan. When I listened to it, I couldn't find a line like that. So maybe it's just another, another song. I don't remember. Um, maybe it's like I fucking popped the cranny yesterday, I just made that up. Um, Blood says Thelma all the way to Memphis. Cause that girl made a rat cut of this. So this is a, this is, this is advanced tier of um, reference. This is advanced obscure reference. This is a reference to Blush by Texas Attacks on. Um, just to, one of my favorite albums by her, but, um, she says it's like one of her worst albums, you know. Usually that's, 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 that's like the way for me. Usually I hear like albums by artists that the artists themselves fucking hate. Um, I mean, that happens with my music too. Uh, so yeah, there's, there's an album called Blush. There's a song called Dharma in it. Um, and it, it, it samples the song T for Tennessee. Where the one of the one of the uh, one of the lyrics is, then that get that guy made the wreck out of me. That's that's it's like a country song, um, it's a very interesting song. It's a very interesting album. So many weird samples and production choices, and so dark. Then at the end, you know, it becomes bright. Like it's such a great album, in my opinion. Um, yeah, that's just the reference to that. Um. Suicidal thoughts like Kurt Cobain, 
it's obviously a, a direct reference to a um of Cloud Cobain by Denzel Curry from from Taboo. Um, though I I always hold it as suicidal thoughts like Kurt Cobain, but apparently it's suicidal doors like Kurt Cobain. What the fuck, Denzel? Well, how does that make sense? Okay. So I've gone to my mouth, blow out my brain. Um, I thought Kurt Cobain shot himself with the shotgun, right? I th- that's how he killed himself, right? I that's why I wrote, wrote this in, but I might be wrong. I might be wrong. Um, I'm not gonna crazy. I'm not going insane, but I'm never gonna leave you. Never let the pain. I think she's like, accusing him, like he's never gonna live through the this kind of pain. Obviously, like narrator, she was wrong. You know, he he would live this kind of pain seven years later, for for seven years. You know, I didn't even talk about the fucking anime girls saying, um, high dice kids. Um, I don't know where what that where that anime girl is from. I got it in a in a I got that clip in an anime vocal sample sample pack that I downloaded. Do not ask, please don't ask why I have that. But if you if you Google anime vocal samples, you could probably find the same um same pack. Um, it, it, it was just there like it fit the tempo. It fit the tempo. She she. Well, says to the rhythm, hi, Daisuke, that leads her perfectly, I thought. I put it in the song to, like, make fun of the uh, producer tags. Um, but, and I, I was gonna, like, replace it, you know, but, like, I couldn't find anything, you know? There isn't any other thing I could find that leads up to the verse, you know? It just, it just leads to the verse perfectly. So I couldn't take it out, so, you know, this now, this song permanently has uh, the anime or saying, hi, Daisuke, you know? So like yes, I love you. Um, please, if you know where this clip is, if you know in which anime and which voice actor is uh, saying it, um, please tell me so I can credit her in in the uh, <laughs> in here. I want to credit her. You know, she makes this song. Uh, and I'm glad for that. Open every window and just relax. Um, th- this is like almost like this is like. I was gonna play, I'm gonna say plagiarism, but it's not really plagiarism if I just say he does say this here. But it's, this is a touch the sky by Kanye West. I'm a testify, come in the fight, looking extra, uh, extra hot, I think. Um, and until the day I die, you can touch the sky, you know, it goes like that. Until the day I die, I'm gonna play the act, and you hear that. And this is one of the more catchy, uh, flows I came up with in this album. It's just not, it's not a lot of catchy songs in this fucking album, you know. Just sad, pressure, for vomit. Until the day I die, I'm a single rap. Uh, this, now, this is, uh, this is my second favorite verse, I think, next to the second verse in Penny Lad. Um, here's, here's the uh, quote from Fallen to Pieces. I admire not heroes, but and heroes. This is a very, uh, trial of the Golden Witch kind of, uh, flow. This is a very DZ flow, you know, certified DZ influence. Um, I look down at my doom from an eight floor window. Um, so I guess they live in an eight floor apartment. That, that that's not you can, what, what you can tell. Um, I want it to be fourth floor because again, four is like a thing. I wonder why I want to make a big deal out of. But I mean, if you fall from a fourth floor window, I mean, you could survive that. I mean, that's a chance. So I had to make this show like, yeah, no, you can't survive from a floor fall here. Yeah. Oh yeah, this oh, I just fucking love every single line in this. It's not that the as far as is pleasing for rest, but I look back to consider my chances for the best. I just actually have to lead all. The- all of these in the door, so I can explain it. I can feel something heat radiating from the door. My legs feel like it's burning because the fire is on the floor. They give us why for that is coming close. Is this giving up or resigning? Is this what I chose? It's not desiring the fall. It's the terror of the flames. So this, this entire uh, verse, and literally this entire album is like what I'm trying to say about suicide, basically, if, if there is anything, is... Based from uh okay, so it's it's based on a quote from David Foster Wallace, who wrote uh, Infinite Jest, and I never never I've never read all of Infinite Jest, obviously. Um, 
No, but I did get to the part where this came up, I think. I think this, I, I think this was in Infinite Chest. I'm just gonna leave his quote to this, because like this can, his words explain what I'm trying to say in this voice better than I can, ever can. The so-called psychotically depressed person who tries to kill herself doesn't do so out of quote, hopelessness or any abstract conviction that life's assets and debits do not square. And surely not because that seems suddenly appealing. The person in whom its invisible agony leads to a certain unendurable level will kill herself the same way a trapped person will eventually jump from a window of a burning high-rise. Make no mistake about people who leap from burning windows. Their terror of falling from a great height is still just as great as it would be for you or me standing spec speculatively at the same window just checking out the view i.e. the fear of falling remains a constant. The variable here is the other terror, the fire's flames. When the flames get close enough, falling to death becomes the slightly less terrible of two terrors. It's not desiring the far, it's the terror of the flames. And yet, nobody down on the sidewalk, looking up and yelling don't and hang on, can understand the jump. Not really. You'd have to have personally been trapped and felt flames to really understand the terror way beyond falling. That's what he said. So yeah, that this is like, this is, this, when, when I did this, it changed my mind. I think it changed my life. Um, this is the best thing I, I've ever lit, I've ever uh, read about anyone who have, has written about depression. And of course, David Foster did kill himself. So, you know. Rep. So this is like what I'm trying to express here. People don't kill themselves because they they want they like like they want to kill themselves. Not really. Like it's always because it's the alter they see it as the alternative solution to whatever problems they have. And the people say, oh, don't go. You know, dying seems like a pretty good deal if you ask me. I mean, dying is the absence of living. It's 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 nothing. You know. So it's like if living is so painful. Then now the it, that absence of living seems attractive, um, becomes slightly less terrible. So you know, it, it, when she's when she's describing this heat, you know, she is letting from the that door. You know, like she can like you know, it's you imagine you know, she's putting her hand on the door and you, she can feel the heat. You know, closing, inching it in, and you know, at, at any moment the door is gonna burn down. It's gonna you know. It's gonna, you know, um, burst through, uh, the flames are gonna burst through, you know, she can, uh, 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 the, fa the flames are already so hot that, you know, the flow is heating up and she falls down because uh, her feet is feeling that heat, like, it it's that kind of situation, um, it's like, one day these flames are gonna get me, you know, it's inevitable, it's gonna get me and it's gonna be terrible, uh, or right now I just jump and end this right now before the flames get to me, it's that kind of situation. Um, no matter what I do, it's always gonna end the same, you know? So, so she's saying, you can't say I didn't fucking try, don't put me to blame. Like, she's doing her best, you know? This is like, you know, a, a seven year old doing her best, you know, if, it's, if, it can't, if it counts for anything, you know? So then she's just giving up, you know, right? Again, resigning. It's, it's her jumping out the window, giving up, or, you know, has she fought enough, you know? Again, it's, it's John who's kind of feeding her these thoughts, like, you can't give up, you know, it's, it's, use her will, power, you know? Like, that's the kind of thing John is kind of presumably telling her, you know? Because, you know, a lot of well intentioned, well meaning people really do tell that to suicidal people. And they shouldn't, like, it's, like, make things bad, worse. Um, so yeah, she's like, don't say I didn't try. Like I'm, I'm, I'm trying my, my best here, and it's not working. It's not working, and it doesn't seem like it's gonna work for the time being, for the considerable future. So it's not that she's de 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 desires to fall. It's the terror of the flames. It's because it's so important. I repeated four times in in the song, of course. Now it's time for me to do the almost act of chorus like a hero out of time. So it's my turn to pass. It's, I, I, it was very hard to uh, uh, do in one take without uh, running out of breath. Um, 
like a hero, you know. I I consider like saying end hero, but like again, end hero is too much of a, like a meme fortune connotation that I can't use it in this verse. It's this verse, this verse is too serious. Um, so from an end like a lowly end hero, she's now ascending to a real hate hero in this verse. Um, it's not cowardice, but taking. This is a great. So this is so great that I had to put quotes in in the word taking here, <laughs> taking life, you know, into my own hands. You know, you know the double entendre because one takes their life, but also, uh, it's like it's it's also like taking matters into your own hands. It's, uh, I don't know how to explain this. Okay, <laughs> for the first time in my life, I'm the one that's in command. You know, she says it so confidently, so like. Um, menacingly, yeah, this is such a great verse. I mean, I mean, I think this verse and the Professor and Queenie Led, I think those are the only verses in this album that are like actually really good raps. And she's telling the forest to tear up the fapes. Now I've had it all, I go end this game. Goodbye, world. And John, remember the name. It's fate. Um, I think this is the first, this is the second time, yeah, that she says her own name. It was back in Queenie Led, it was like. She was quoting John, so this is basically the only time she says something. Uh, I mean, besides for this last part, I mean, you can couldn't even probably tell like this song is like a, from a concept album. So yeah, like, like normally this will lead right into fire and and on the face side, but uh because I didn't like that, you know, I like I wanted fire to be almost like a climax to the album, even though it's not the last song. Um. I mean, it was actually the last song of the album for a very long time. Um, in the track, my trailer as I had listened had it was going kind to of end with fire and the uh, with that scent tone just cutting out. Um, obviously I I, just, I didn't think that was in good taste, so I just added all this. Um, but yeah, I wanted to put the distance between fire and window, so you know it it feels more like fire isn't taking place in the middle of the album, but at the end of the album. Uh. So it's a graveyard now. I think this is the best song in the album. And uh, again, it does. It barely has anything to do with the story because it, it originally didn't have to do with the story. I wrote all of these lyrics, and they originally didn't have anything to do with all any of uh, the story. Um. So actually, the uh, name of the character John came from this song. You know, I, I say, "Oh well, I'm John," and, and uh, I decided to make the uh, brother character John. Um, I to combine them when I put this uh, song in the album. So this this starts in, in inspiration, you know. Kind of a very Kanye West like vocal the song. But uh the actual like compositional inspiration was a uh, neighborhood dissociation from Just Fun's Feminology album. It has a similar kind of melodic structure. Uh, I met a girl at the graveyard, the moonlight was kissing her feet. I wiped my tears and watched her stare at the dirt. She didn't look mournful at all. Resentful is the word I would call. It's kind of a weird line. Like, it should, like, usually you say, resentful is the word I would use, or you, the word I would say. You don't say call, but I have to make a line. So, so he meets a girl at the graveyard. you very romantic. What a romantic setting. So, if you go to my WordPress, uh, you go to my WordPress where I write stuff, like reviews or fiction. Um, there's a, there's a story I wrote back in 2018. Um, it's one uh, when I, I look this uh, look the song called "When Did They Die," and it's a it's a sort of story, and it actually doesn't have much to do with called this that because it's actually about an an older girl meeting a younger girl, so you know. Um, but it, it's a very it's a uh, very similar concept where you know two people meet at a graveyard, and I would say I like, guess they bond over you know. Their respective um loved or hated ones, uh graves, um, I, was kind of, I think it's one of the better things, better fiction I've written because it's kind of short and, and sweet. Um, so so you could read that and kind of, that's kind of like what how would this song sound like if I wrote it in prose novel form? Um, I, I I consider like. I guess this is my head canon, but the young girl in in that story, in that when did they die story, I think grew up to be charity. I think that's my head canon now. 
the charity, you know, the the, the god that uh, he meets you. That's 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 an interesting kind of Nishawa thought that I, I I had the other day, and I wanted to kind of say that. Um. So so at one point she started speaking or something, you know, and he assumed she was like was tongue tongue into the grave or something. Couldn't hear but watched her lips move, and she got fed up and started walking towards me. She's actually telling me to fuck up. Like she was, she was like. At first, she probably was talking to us. I'm like, "What the fuck is this guy doing? Like, he's just staring at me. It's fucking creepy." Then she she just said, "Like, go up to him." And I couldn't even come up with such stuff. Um, some people say they misheard this. Uh, she was sexually telling me to fuck off. Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, that's so fucking funny. Um, he says, "I I said sorry. I hadn't noticed you had noticed me." Um, damn, he's, he's talking in typing quark. It's, it's typing quark. You know, the one she types in capitalization. <laughs> Homestuck. <laughs> she was like, what is wrong with you? I like, um, someone t- pointed out how I did, they like how I, I sing the dialogue in these songs. You know, when I sing the dialogue portions, it's like I'm also acting out the line. It's like, what is wrong with you? Like, you know, like that's, that's how I imagine she's saying it. Um, I don't think you know, the singing is a form of acting, and I literally do acting in this in this song. If you can call it a song, so you know, um, I like doing that. Uh, I wish I told her that I wanted to comfort her because I know what I know. No one did for me. I know no one did for you. But when I was writing this song, it was just only like a vague sense of this. The this narrator has a loved one that they they lost. Um, obviously, when I said to put it in, in graveyard, it, it became it's just for fame. Um, the structure of the song is interesting too. Like, there's no chorus, there's no hook. You know, there's like almost like crooning. You know, couldn't tell her that she reminds me of the one who laid over there, buried right over there. Again, I think we spent it probably. Um, oh God, it's twenty five minutes, and we only got to the graveyard. Oh no, it's gonna just. Dis- this video is totally going to be like two, hours, two and a half hours. Um, she came again next week to my surprise. I was going to go, but this time she was the, she was the one staring. And I was just curious. Um, she asked why I come here every day. Every day um, is to say hello to my sister. Um, I don't remember. I don't think it was sister in the original, in original lyrics. I think I changed it to sister when I decided it would be um, use some color to that. Um, then, then I can relate. Um, and that, I don't think she means that, you know, again, she doesn't have a sister. Um, and, and when did they die? The young girl had a dead father who had abused her. That was like the gist of it. Um, I think, I think Charity has the same thing. Again, they might, they might be just even be the same character, maybe. Who knows? Um, she sighed and I loved. Then you and me bored. Uh, if, if you can't tell, this is, this is, um, Charity saying, and this is John saying, saying the thing. We talked for a while. She cried, but I didn't ask why. But I did ask for her name. Um, she said something like, I don't have to tell you, so I want. This is actually this is kind of a very weeb anime thing. It's actually from, I think, in Danganronpa. When you ask um Kirigiri her name for the first time, she tells, she, that's what she said. I don't have to tell you, so I want. <laughs> yeah, it's a very anime chandere kind of line. <laughs> <laughs> but it, now it just you can also you know he just says oh wait I'm done like just in case it, like um he just tells tells her his name because he doesn't um that's not what uh, it bothers like I think this is a good moment of characterization you know or oh, are you okay um it's just nothing um again this is this is John asking her if, if she's okay and she says it just it's just nothing something's off but is that true huh. This is a, so um, I don't, I, no, I can't talk about it. So something's off. This this line has significance, but I can't explain it because it doesn't have to do with this album. Yeah, let's just remember that. I, I say this a lot in my in my music. Um, I don't know if it's just me or if her too. Okay, let's go to charity. That is the weirdest song in here, probably. Like it's it's the song that doesn't fit the most because I had to make it after having gra- called graveyard there because like this new character shows up suddenly to this narrative about these two siblings. So now I have to kind of kind of develop this new character before we get to the ending, you know. So now now this song is 
No, I could have called it a charity song, but you know. I've been searching for a way to live. Lose my mind like it's Byzantine. Um, the new Weezer album, um, Black album, which I actually love, um, has a song called Byzantine. Oh, not that it has anything to do with anything. I pop my head on the guillotine. I, I, I always say, I always say guillotine. It's guillotine. Guillotine! You know? It's, it's that guillotine. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> well, Charity is her name, and she gives. Uh, born and buried in Emerald Green, she lost everything as a teen. Uh, I don't, I don't go too much into this character. Uh, wish I could take back all that I did. She says, No, you must make it routine till the kid forms up and turns porcelain. I mean, you can see kind of of a, of a world view, you know. She she doesn't play the pussy for things in game that John plays, you know. She's she's like no, you have to like if you feel guilty, you have to keep feeling it. And in her case, it, it's rage, you know. Um, and she can't get a, a let go of it. And uh, she doesn't. She, I don't think she, there's a kind of person that really feels a regret. Um, when Emerald Green, I I I put this in because I use a kind of limes, but um, uh, um, I've been also listening to a lot of Yolo Sika albums and emerald green is like a thing they talk about a lot because emerald green is like um i think it's also a name for a type of um ink that is poisonous or something um uh, in this song it just means to you know the color of emerald green i just think that's cool imagery <laughs> okay um <laughs> Uh, I accidentally stopped. I actually dropped my phone and it stopped recording. Okay, <laughs> I, I can edit this. I, I can edit this. Um, yeah, and she eats my mind and it make me hurt sometimes. This uh, kind of, this was kind of lift from um, the Just Funs song from from their um new record, Hungry Heart. The song of DMT. Um, it, it that, that's a similar line. Let me. Let me in that song is and it hurt my mind I make it worse sometimes. Um it's still wondering why like, can't I find no woman who can do it like a man do. Um this is a great line. Um kinda of dead flow but you know I I kinda of switch the uh switch the words and so ease my mind make me hurt sometimes but it's all just fine. We talked and talked until there was nothing to talk about. We kiss in the moonlight which is which is weird. It's like but um, I think both of them kind of feel awkward about that, but like, and you know, <laughs> it's what horny people do. Um, <laughs> it just kept that distance until the feeling disappeared. I wanted to kind of portray this like yeah. literally kind of awkward, weird, uncomfortable romance between these two characters. Um, who like you know form form the bond. I so, said, you know, we are we are a lot alike. Um, that that's. Who left the sorrow but that. Okay, so actually just confirmed um that she has a dead bad. Yeah, I don't fucking I don't even remember some of this. Um she says there's a, there's a conflict. Um I am powered by rage, but you with guilt. I'm the son of rage and love. The genius of suburb here, yeah, you know. <laughs> um but we are fucked up all the same, I said. Bullshit, she says, your guilt on her not him. I said, you know, uh her his, you know, liver and his guilt and his sins are about fate and not his death. Um, you can still atone, at least find com comfort, something I cannot. Um, so she can find comfort because he, he his hang ups like with guilt, you know, he, which is something that he really has to get over himself. Um, but and he can quench that guilt, you know. Um, I mean, obviously. The fate can never come alive and forgive him in person, but at least he can live with that, choose to live with that guilt and, you know, find comfort uh, somehow by, you know, accepting himself. But she can't accept herself because her problem is that rage, you know. She wants to take revenge on this person, I guess, um, and which she can never do. She can never quest this. She can never find comfort. Um. So for f for charity, there's really not a happy ending, you know. It's kind of sad. I mean, it's just only mentioned only once again in this song. Again, this kind of a worthless, thing, pointless character. But I again, I wanted to put this graveyard song in, so I had to. It's kind of complicated. 
I met a girl and craved the heart. The moonlight danced as it watched the stream. Okay. Maybe we can like stop by like the 40 or 50 minute mark at this rate. Oh, welcome to fire. Again, this is the song that took me like three weeks to light. Um, I pack up the things tablet. These are my records of living. It is so that you'll find them. Wait a minute. Uh, okay, I don't, I don't know if I just cut that, but I have to check OPS. Okay. Uh, I, I pack up the things that I've written. These are my records of living. It is so that you'll find them. So she, she's, now this is planning her, planning her, her suicide, you know. She's having, uh, so that she, uh, John can find these letters. But to be told, I knew this would happen. Play with that like it's blackjack because I'm talking on project. I don't think I, I think she's actually taking project. It's, it's just a rhyme. Again, a lot of it is just evocative imagery. I mean, she's, I don't think she's actually talking on project. I mean, if she, maybe it's one of the many ways she's, you know, considering to take her life. But she decides to jump, up, jump the, out the window at her instead. Um, putting my letters in the backpack, hoping you're leading and look back. Um, I made up my mind, I'm ready to die, I'm not fucked up, so why do I cry? Um, again, this is kind of repeat, I mean, this is more like a, you know, like, kind of like a medley, you could say like a rap medley of all the previous face songs, it's kind of literally treading these thoughts. I looked to my back and it's fire in my eye, but it feels so cold happy to say goodbye. Um, doom is impending a silent terror, I'm sure about this for the margin of error. Once, uh, the way I say it, I say that one shift jump, but it should be one swift jump. But saying swift, that's fast in this kind of fast flow is kind of it's kind of impossible. So you, you know, I just kind of left it. Uh, and it will all be better, um, cause now I can imagine me being dead. You know, again, it's, it's the being dead line from um, face. So this song is kind of like um, what I imagined it as like Bohemian Rhapsody with uh, sicko mode. So this part where the tempo and the flow changes, um, it's very much like a uh, yeah, young young flame is going sicko mode. It's that kind of moment. I'm trying to do that. <laughs> oh. Can't help but imagine what will happen when I'm gone. Will anyone notice always say good? Good returns. Um, so this is like probably the most um, like personal part uh, weirdly in this album because I like, I mean, I'm like, I'm doing it quite better than I was when I was seven. I'm, I'm like, like, I'm not fate here. I mean, I'm, I'm, I wish I'm like John here probably. Um, but I, 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 I constantly, like, I basically think about this every day. Like, what's gonna happen when I'm dead? Like, I, I constantly think about faking my own death. So I can like find out what people just say about it. I mean, I can imagine a ton of people, you know, if we say, yeah, I kind of thought that would happen. Um, I just want to find out uh, which one should actually do it. Because if I actually fake and I come back, you no know, one's gonna, everyone's gonna think I'm a terrible evil person, so I'm not gonna do that. What about you, brother? Will you remember me, John? What's my what life so worthless that it's as short as a dawn? Um, this, this, that, that's a cool line. I saw it as a dawn. Um, John, I don't give a fuck about anything. Uh, someone told me this is probably like the f best part, like the, the best flow that I put off in the entire album. Uh, I'm not sure. I think I've, I feel like I could have done, I could have done a better the take. Um, I don't care a fuck about anything. I'm done trying to understand the pressure. Tell me I don't feel better. We had fucking in it. Like, you know, like at the end of, I saw the album, she was like pleading, like, please tell me just how, how to feel. Like, I don't, I want, I want to figure out here. I want to understand people. I don't want uh, to uh, live like this. But now she's like, fuck, fuck that. Fuck people. Fuck, just fuck everything. I, I'm just gonna end this. Like, I don't, I don't give a shit. Now I know who to kill. You know, she knows which one to kill now. After generating the force to tear up the fame, I take up my suit, it's the end of the game. So, um, I think it's, it's like in Japanese media, where like a trope is someone takes off their shoes before they jump, jump to their death. Um, I don't really understand that, why they take off their shoes, but again, like, it's just imagery. Um, everything's clear, I know who's alive to claim, let's get on with the so immortalize my name. So it's pretty kind of like obsessed with him, like, Making her name be known. I think it's just that you know, she she's obsessed with like letting people know her work, her life's work, you know, and which it might you know like, 
the legion she's packing on the uh, all the stuff just let it might be a, a way to like you know get trip and so on after she's dead but it might also just be like a like a, just a desire that someone would ever look at the thing is that she spent her life doing cover your face up um i kind of the way i kind of like it was this was unintentional but the way i, I um extrude this part is kind of like i think i say like a children's song like laying around the lodge like you know, co cover your face and up every window like that's kind of how i do it here i realize like an artly widow you know, from budget um Turning it on and becoming the hero. She's not just an end hero anymore. She's the hero. You know, it's like, it's like, it, it the progress is N hero, A hero, then D hero. Mm -hmm. It's like a fucking Pokemon evolution. <laughs> just take off your chains and jump out the window. Um, this part is pretty crazy. Yeah, for the last part of Fates, Fates, uh, Fates, Fates side, I, I want it to be more like chill. Um, it's like now that she's like right in front of the window, she's like open and she can stare it down, and it's just like one step away. Um, everything slows down, and it becomes very calm. Um, take a step forward, take a step back, take a deep breath, have a second to relax. Strange how even the wind feels welcoming, goes far my cheeks and dries the tears I've been gathering. So she's been crying all this time. Um, it's almost like a so and don't tell kind of storytelling here, you know? Address the tears I've been gathering. That's how you can infer that she's been crying. Um, I'm not very good at that. I'm not very good at so and so don't tell kind of thing. I just, t I just tell you everything. I mean, I think that's okay. Um, take a step forward, no reason to hesitate. You've gone through this before, coward. What's that to contemplate? So she's been, she's been in this similar situation before, but every time she knew that she wouldn't jump, uh, jump you know? Every time she didn't have her her mind ready, her heart ready. Right now, you know, like she's fully like this is after um countless uh, contemplations. Now, like she's you know she's she's here to do it. Um, breathing sort of sing, probably sweating to my head. Um, sweating to my head. That's not really a phrase. I'm just saying that she's like shaking. She's sweating. You know. Um, images passed by of Christina and is painted red. So now a final um, a final reference to painted red and Christina um, Miss Sissy, her counselor that killed herself. Um, this 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 line was actually different for a long time, but I kind of changed that last minute to be about Christina. Um, so that you know it's more of a book ends thing. You know, the this album stuck. I mean, face side at least start with someone killing herself. And it ends by someone else killing herself. Um, take a step forward, look up at the sky. I don't want to die. I literally don't want to die. I, like when, when I was like the Corinthians part, I was like literally fucking crying. Like I was kind of trying to cry. Like it's just like she's like she does. She really, she really doesn't want to die. Like that. I I wanted I wanted this line to be the one line where fate sounds like a seven year old child. Like. I don't want to die. I literally don't want to die. Like, doesn't. Again, it's not designing the forest to tear up the flames. So she looks back, but the fire is getting closer. And then she looks down at the dirt. Because she said it was the asphalt a song ago. <laughs> I didn't even notice that. It's gonna be okay. Just relax. This one hurts. So this was, uh, I think, Hunter S. Thompson's last words. He says, oh, she said, oh, this won't hurt. And they, um, no, suicide note, he grabbed the eyes. That suicide note was one of the more fascinating suicide notes in existence. Um, he was basically just literally bummed out that he was too old to party and fuck. And, um, he, he always said that he, that he would, he would, um, off himself when it came, it came that time. And he, and he did it. Um, take a step forward, take a deep breath. To so this part where, the fuck, there's a light, lighting tone, it's just a, I take a tip for, this part I had in my mind for like probably a year straight, um, until I actually got to write the lyrics and put down the beat, this is the part that I had in mind, this, and I think I, I like, more or less like, uh, perfect, perfectly replicated my vision, this is gonna be a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful death. Um, so this is the uh, from the Kanye West song Power, 
And I mean, I could have came up with a different melody that like expressed the same emotions, but I mean, I'm not, not I'm not gonna be able to come up with a better melody than this, you know, it's fucking powerful by Kanye West. You know, I I pitched it up and I pitched the key of three semitones, and it doesn't seem like you know, it doesn't seem like they've caught it yet. I haven't got the copyright claim on any of the uploads, so you know. This is the Kanye West song. Um, I think this was like the perfect song for me to sample. But usually when I sample stuff, it's either too obscure that no one, no one, no one knows, then so it might as well be my original song, or it's too noticeable and it gets copyright claim. I, op- I mean, I mean, this is like obviously one of the most famous hip hop songs of all time. So like, hopefully like everyone listening to this album will get to this point in the album and go, what, wow, what the fuck, like, yeah. This is like, this is a hard moment to top. Dude, that's that's face tight. That's done. She's 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 did, she's done. Um, uh, this last part where it's a bunch of these bit bit but crossed ambient tones and sent sent uh, tones, uh, sent and like there's there's this distorted square wave. Um, and then it cuts out in the middle. And that's kind of like you play by all in the in the album Pure Comedy by Farage and Misty. The album ends with um, there's three bells that ring, and then and the last bell cuts out during the middle of my middle, um, as a place. It's kind of like a joke. So it's almost like a joke. You know, it's almost set up like a joke. Like it just cuts off. It's I'm I was kind of trying to you know. Make an all the auditory representation of what is going on as she's laying there, um, in the ground, bleeding out, dying. Like that, these these are her last fleeting thing, uh, thoughts and inside her mind. And then it's a cut off. She gets just not. It's just then she she dies. So this is blood kill part two now. I I I don't. I'm not gonna leave that or so long because I already do that in the song itself. But uh. Yeah, one thing I'm gonna say is that this was all written out. Um, this wasn't like me improvising. In, on Rain, on um, my album Rain, I do a similar thing where I do like a, um, in speaking, spoken word interlude every now and then. And all of those, those were uh, basically improvised. But uh, these I looked this. And I, I mean, I couldn't write lines like, uh, every moment in life doesn't pass by without thinking about how you could have grown up to be. How could I fucking write that sentence? I couldn't come up with that in the middle of doing uh, improvising, you know? But this is a kind of like a cheesy way to like up- resolve John's character arc, but I mean, there's, there wasn't much other ways I could do this, you know? Um, I always wanted to do like a, you know, like a phone, like a... <laughs> Fun, fun message interlude in this album. I just didn't know that I, if I could actually fit it in, but I realized that if I couldn't make fire the uh, the uh, last last track because like this was before twenty twenty, right? That was I was gonna make fire the last track. Then twenty twenty happened. It was and the album was like way too depressing. If it ends with the main character killing herself, I was like, okay, I have to do something else. Um, so then I had the idea of you know writing these three songs. Um the, the last two songs are basically one song that I cut in half. So yeah, this is kind of um that kind of fun message thing like, you know, like talking like talking into your ex to to a phone mail, that kind of like time cloud album thing, but you know it's it's obviously different. I know that you have never loved me, that it's no longer something I worry. Uh, 2,555, that's 7 years by the way. Um, even if I can't make up for it, this memory, I'll never burn it. I know that you can't ever forgive me. Nothing that I could do will take it back for me. But maybe if I put it down in the story, it can come my way of saying sorry. Yep. I mean, there's not a lot of things that John can do to redeem himself. I mean, he does something pretty horrible. Like, he, like, he, he, I mean, I, again, I don't think it's his, it's his responsibility. I don't think it's his direct fault that, you know, his sister you know, killed, killed herself. But I mean, he, he, he played a part, you know, again, it was, it's about in the environment of people who she grew up with. And he was one of the many people who were in a position to really help her out. But, you know, even, even though with, he, Leached his hand out with good intentions. You know, he says some, there's some pretty fucked up shit. Like I said before, you know, even though it's kind of hard to notice. So, I mean, 
if if you can't re- redeem himself, if you can't yeah, ex- on forgiveness, you know, that at least he can learn to accept himself, learn to love himself, and you know, never f- have to forget what happened, you know, that so that it never happens again, and you know, so that she li- lives on through him. Okay, so I wanted to add a bit more to Blood Gate Part Two. Some people are asking me about like the acting that I did did in this uh in this track, you know, how how did I do it? Um it was a bit natural for me. I mean, I do consider singing to be in part or a form of acting, you know. Whenever I sing a song I'm trying to get into the mindset of the character. In general, I think if you want to be like good at writing, um good at writing like telling stories I think you need to learn acting in in a sense, you know, in a broad sense, you know, like I, to, to a certain extent, you have to learn how to like embody a kind of mindset, like a kind of idea, a kind of person. Um, so but when I'm singing, you know, I'm trying to like kind of almost um speak at the same time. Like I'm I'm trying to express the uh, emotions that our characters expressing because I also uh, make concept albums. But uh, in this in this part I'm not singing like I'm I'm also like I- I'm just straight up, you know, doing voice acting, I could say. And uh it it felt it felt pretty good. Um yeah it'd be funny to uh, compare what what is my actual uh, kind of speaking voice in this video and the uh, the character the John that I'm as playing in this track, you know, at first I'm I'm uh, like, has have I have this super um serious sounding dramatic uh quiet voice, and then I kind of transition into this um emotional almost crying voice. Um, I think I did kind of try to fake cry. Um, but I I didn't I couldn't quite get there. Like I didn't actually cry, but I I, I got I I um it was almost there, you know. Um. This is also a bunch of takes kind of stitched together, though most of it is was the first take I did. Um, and uh, I always wanted to say, like, I, I, I came up with this whole thing. I, I wrote, this, wrote down this entire monologue um, randomly at night. I, I couldn't sleep, so I, I opened my phone and, and wrote this down. And I, cause I came up with the idea to do this kind of fun interlude thing, this message interlude. And at the time, I, I thought it was just going to be, you know, just this voice clip. Um, maybe, maybe that's why I'm not that happy with this. I'm, like, I'm not that, like, satisfied or content with how I did it. I keep finding other albums where people did do this kind of spoken word interlude thing better. I feel like it could have been better maybe if I just had taken out all the music. Like, I guess the Blood Get Part 2 thing wouldn't really make sense if I didn't also have the singing part at the end. But that, that was just kind of like, um, that was almost impromptu. I was just making the background music. I came up with the idea to do that, so I went to, went back and recorded more of this. Um, but it was always called. It was always going to be called the Blood Guilt Part Two because it's kind of continuing of the themes of Blood Guilt. You know, this 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 concept of this inherent generational sin that he is gripping with. I guess that's mostly it. that's mostly it for Blood Care Part Two. Um, people tell me like this is the moment in the album where like things settle in for them. You know, this is, like their oh shit moment. Like they um, this is like a really emotional song. Like very kind of unlike my music because a lot of my music is very you know raw. You could say it's honest and kind of dialect in terms of theming. Um. But there isn't a lot of things where like it's really trying to tug at your heartstrings. I don't, I don't really try to like make that break. But this is like obviously trying to like make you feel emotional. Um, so which is cool. Um, it's always cool to hear stuff like that. I I didn't think that this would be of all tracks that people would really resonate with. But I'm happy. Yeah. So that's it for Bucket Part Two. So uh, I think uh, in Barney Gray. Graveyard the window. This is probably the best song. Um, I can't believe that I have like a future based kind of moment, drop moment in this fucking um hip hop album. This is like straight up not hip hop anymore. This is not hip hop. Today you'd be fourteen years old, two years older than I was when you jumped into fire. So like this is like making the f- timeline clear. Seven years and counting time you could have acquired. 
Um, I think it's a tough about this, right? It might have cut it out, actually. She would have been 14 years old, and she died 7 years ago, then she was 7 back then. And um, he was 2 years older than that. So, no, he was 2 years younger than that. Because he was 2 years older than I was. He was 12 when Fate died. So that means he was 5 years older. Um, then it's been 7 years, so now he's 19. That's, that's the timeline. Kind of, kind of confusing for some reason, needlessly, but yeah. I had to make that, I had to set that record straight. I'm in borrowed life from your funeral pyre. Um, again, like, probably the, for me, the most, like, the most depressing, the most heartbreaking thing about this entire thing is like, like imagining, you know, a, a girl like this die, you know, like the seven year old kid who is clearly like a wordsmith genius. Like, you know, think about, the, the, the things that she could have done, you know, in seven years, you know, if she was like this in, in, at seven, what could have she, she done when she was 14, like, that's like what really breaks me, like, all the things that she could have done, all the potential, all the chances that she could have been given, it's now gone, you know, from such a young age, that, that just breaks my heart, you know, um, I think that's the most sad thing for me when I was writing this album. Uh, couldn't say through it again. It feels selfish to claim my life to appease this broken heart. So now he feels like it's, it'd be selfish for him to now take his, his life, you know? It kind of, you know, like, his kind of social thoughts uh, at this point, kind of like, he's, he, he's, um, he's managed to push them out. So I have to remember your choice, or I hear it's your voice. I mean, this is another line where I was singing and I almost cried. <laughs> and you can actually hear that. Um, Charity once said to me, I lost family tragedy. This is a fucking, okay, this is weird. So this melody is from, uh, is from the Kagero project song called Tomei Answer. Yeah, that's, that's the song. Um, so that is a Kagero project song. The Kagero project is like this. She had a Vocaloid song that has like a story, and it's also a manga, and the a it's an, also an anime, but the anime is a completely fucking best bonker, and you can't understand what's going on, because it was originally like a bunch of fucking Vocaloid songs. Yeah, it's crazy. But yeah, that, that, that song has the same melody, like, na 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 that's a great song. Um, Charity once said to me, Our lives may be tragedies, we can still valiantly accept it as a finality, you know. This is, I guess, how her character arc leads off. This is her way of coping with this, you know. Um, it might be tragedies, but we can still, you know, accept it as... I mean, I'm I'm not saying, you know, you should just accept your situation as it is. Like, it, it, you can't have this. You know, I'm not saying that, you know. Like, I'm saying, like, you can learn to accept yourself and love yourself, even if you are fucked up and broken and you have, might have done something terrible. Um, we can always learn to love ourselves, I think. At least if not complete on love, um, just like, learn to accept it as you as who you are. Maybe, I don't, I don't fucking know. I don't fucking know what I'm saying in these songs. Um, the Graveyard Girl Charity rubbed a bit all empty. And she says, If I can find peace with insanity, what just what's to say you can't then? It kind of, I, um, I should have made this rhyme, but ends with then. Kind of weird. You know, walk like a vigilante after dark. I'm asking what changed with this one remark. Oh, Faye, baby, sister, my sister, I need you. Um, then it, and this is to take care of yourself. Um, I think this came up to me just like in, while I was taking a shower, I came up with, I don't know what to do. I, I came up with that melody. Um, can tell what is true, the one that I killed was you. I say what I couldn't say, what I, what I couldn't that day. You stay in the words that I lay. I'm guessing what he couldn't say is, take care of yourself. It's really what I want to say to people right now um, who's like, really struggling with mental health, you know, struggling with the financial issues because of all that's happening, you know. Um, take care of yourself, like, Never forget to uh, take care of your mental health, you know. Um, never, never forget to take a break. I want you to remember her smile, her gifted words. She could have had the world. Again, this is like 
probably this is my like, my daughter favorite line in the entire album. Because again, for me, the most kind of emotional part about this narrative is the fact that she could have had the world and like, like, when she got older, she could have like fucking become something so much more. But she got cut short so 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 young, you know that and that kind of that kind of story really breaks my heart. Um, won't die till December. Um, I mean, it doesn't mean that he will die when December comes. It's more like wake me up when when September ends. It's more like that kind of thing. Like like he's, like December is you know like the last month of the um the year. So she, he's now saying like I'm not gonna uh, kill myself. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna try to live long and, and never let these memories go so that fate can live um live through all the, that live throughout that life as well um because april is come and gone i put her in the song so maybe the, this horror color this that album is you know it's the product of john's you know creation you know maybe he wrote on this song he he used the uh, uh fake diary letters to make the the face side songs maybe um it, it, it could it could be something like that um and, and I don't think uh, it, I think some of that doesn't really make sense. Like some of this, like some of this doesn't really make sense if this is like in in universe A rap album. Like this is this is supposed to be like an album inside this universe. Like like in Salt and Pepper, right? Uh, Salt and Pepper, the the album is supposed to be a, an album made by the Salt and Pepper band, you know. Um, but I don't I don't think that really fits with Carlos. That or there's a lot of things that like you wouldn't really. See. Is normally say unless it was just the story being told, you know. Um, so it's that that that, that like has credence, but I'm not sure. Um, I guess it's up for you to think about it. And that's like end of color this that. Um, so I had one last song to show you. Um, it's this cut song. I cut this song out. It's the overture track. I was gonna put in the overture track before Pain in Land. So that the story was easier to understand throughout you listening to this. Um, it was an overture track that kind of explains the whole story and goes into more depth. So I'm gonna pull that out now. Okay, now we have the uh, have the thing. Uh, actually, can we let's let's do this to audacity. This is the song. This is the whole thing, and I'm just gonna read it. Read this out loud. Um, I might try to, you know, maintain some of the rhythms. So, life is a moment. It comes and it goes. But for some reason, how it ends is what they care the most. The loss of a one loved, the news hanging unplugged. When one fail is to see their value, where well, it's tempting, but I'll tell you. Then, like, the beat drops. Um... Have you seen the news? I'm afraid it's skewed. Good news, I'm not here to bullshit you. Headline, seven-year-old kills herself to escape abuse. The radio plays some trap-sounding blues. I mean, of course, this ain't the full picture. We haven't yet even gotten to the real kicker. So brace yourselves, face yourself, may the loss get help. Let me tell you a story that may turn out too gory. Um... Cover your face and open every window. Let the ventilation rage and crescendo. Just in case, prepare a pillow. Feel free to scream along during the show. All oh, this ain't a pretty sight. Here's some warnings for the night. It's a long or make some room for the day. See what the culprit has to say. Well, I think I think this whole thing is from John's perspe- perspective, but he's kind of speaking it in a. Nah, this is like a star personality to, to speaking to the characters. You are wearing black, you can't have a back. Will you list for a flask? Could you take it back or make it back? Have a back, there since the coffin, your sister's soon forgotten. Suppress all the rage in your case, it's what you told her. Called her. You remember how her corpse just went cold, horrid, or couldn't make her last word. She was smiling, you were spiding, waiting for the sight to take her as if it was your own death. Regrets pressed by her final breath. Blood is on your hands, silence ringing as you stand. You remember when she jumped, how majestically grand. You are at ground zero as you saw me coming and... 
um, you are a grand general as you saw her uh, becoming an hero. It was like she jumped into fire, went higher and higher. You now hold that gate, generations carried down that well. Remember as you were, you damn sure as hell know that you were. See how easy it is to kill, once you spirit is hard to turn. Dread of the sin that we bear. Come on, join us, color this stat with a credit. That, so there have been the title drop that never came up in the actual album. Um, this is one of the first lines that actually came up for for this album when I before when I just had and here written it's this line let's call this that with a quote which is where the album title came from. Eventually I couldn't put this in any of the songs but oh uh, yeah. Oh fake you poor girl flew to cross the sun your mother's mistake the second to a son you fed up fed up you fed up you fed up abandon and you come and Okay. Let's try, let's take it from the top. Oh, fate you poor girl, flees to cross to the sun. Your mother's mistake, the second to her son. You felt abandoned and you come undone. Society rejected your family was son. Brother, brother, John, brother, he was like a father. They killed himself when you were two. Left it not just for you. John, let it out loud, that was the least he could do. That, that's when he was seven too. What else could he even do? Well, you didn't understand the thing you fucking said. Christ, you were too. What was going on in his head? John was never what you call a stable person, but you never had another life for study, that's for certain. Would you find a gun because your mother or the run? He practically raised you, basically made you. Mother expected too much from me, from you generous to say nothing. You are nothing, you are nothing, you are nothing, you are nothing. <laughs> um, th this should have been so like, being like, layered with like, background focus that would keep pitching down as you as I, I said that, that that's what I had in mind. Okay, this would be a cool song to make. I just didn't think like this was necessary at all. Like no this exposition. Um. Well, this is no place for me to do the part thing. I was saying nothing's worth dying, but why is the narrator in prime? So I'm not saying why you chose that over life. Did that seem better to you, or was life not worth the fight? Was it the bullying? Was it the abuse? Was it the robber? Will they be accused? He looks back but doesn't care. Nothing can bring you back there. Now, this is actually completely omitted from the album. Three years later, mother dies of cancer. Seven years later, call is for John to enter. So, four years before the event of John's side, you know, his mom dies and now he's like, he's, a, he's an orphan, I guess. Um, now the tape diverges into two passing ways, but I'm shutting up. Let's hear what they have to say, and then we'll leave the penny that. That's that's the song. Um, I don't think I have a lot to say about this this, this overture track. I mean, um, I I like this beginning. I think this would be a great um. There's a bunch of like uh, lines that they would be good great for the opener lines of this album. This is one of the life is a moment. It comes and it goes. I think in Bali is kind of the theme of this album. Um, this part is kind of like kind of too hammy headline. Um, and this like this is like goosebumps. Get let the kids you're in for a scare. That that tear kind of. I I I probably just cut this part out if I I didn't make the song. So this is um this part first is like describing um Faith's funeral. Um, when he is in there, um, and then he, this, uh, this, uh, then this is describing she smiling, she was biting, she was smiling when she, as she was dying. Um, this is, is explain. So this is basically the last minute part of fire from John's perspective as she's dying. This is what John uh, saw. You know, he he came came up to her. Um, so you know, that would be a like cool a cool thing. To, that you could have seen, but not now you know. Now you know this song, you know, the suicide overture, you know. You know, it would have been just called overture. And the silence thing as you stand us at the ambulance. Um so he saw he saw as she jumped. You know, I I, I guess she, he was like coming back to home and he, and he and he, he saw that. So when when fate was two, which would have been when John was seven Two plus five is seven. Yup, I am a smart, smart, smart. <laughs> um, so their their dad died when when and they were that young, and uh, so basically, he, um, John became a father figure to Fate from then on. You know, as the other uh, a man of the house. Um, 
And interestingly, the note, the suicide note, was addressed to Fade. They have uh, their dad's suicide note. Um, I don't, I didn't, I don't even remember these details, you know. I don't, I don't because eventually I cut all this out because there's, because basically this, this is all useless information. Like, you don't need all of this story exposition, like, and, like, and it's not even, it's like, it's a novel, you know. Um, in terms of the themes that I want to express, the, the songs in the album just did that fine. Um, so John lead it out like to, to fucking two year old toddler's fate, you know, she would lead this, um, suicide note out loud and presumably until she, uh, she, she couldn't understand it you know but like maybe presumably she still let it sometimes like and like, uh, like maybe one day she, like, she did learn speech then now she could understand like, it's it's unclear um but like christ what's going on in his head like what the fuck dude like it would have too you don't do that like it's, it's so uh, fucked up but i guess to him like it, it was like but the note is addressed to her, like, she, she needs to know. Um, maybe she one day, she, John later gave faith that not, you know, one day. Um, you no, know, once she was old enough. I mean, she was still seven, so she wasn't really old enough, so maybe, maybe one, she, she never got to give her that. You know? And John was never what you call it, John was never like a normal kid, even, even John. Like before, even before Fate died, you know. Um, so the uh, Fate and John's mother, you know, like she wouldn't like, be be at home all the time, and she mostly cared about John because you know he was he had he was good at academic, he studied it well, um, and she basically just fucking completely didn't even think Fate existed, um. Um, and once Fate died, you know, like that, I'm, I'm I'm sure that came off as a shock to her, and combined the shock and her, I guess she also had a weak body, so that's why she died of cancer. Yep. Um, but you know, like arguably the mother is like the worst character in this entire story because you know she basically abused Fate and abandoned her. Um. Yeah. I think I think basically that's basically what I have to say about Curtis. That I mean, it's a complicated album. If I if you told me to like say, like sum it up and you know say my final thoughts, I don't know. I don't know what, what I would say honestly. I honestly don't don't know. Just this has been like two hours now. Two two hours for me to talk about twelve songs, and it took uh, like thirty minutes of that talking about one song. <sighs> yeah, Just that, that, I probably wrap it up now. Uh, cut this down, yeah. Go listen to it on johnjans.bandcamp.com and give me money, buy it, so I can buy a better microphone and yeah. I don't have to pop. So, for the last hour, it probably hasn't popped much because I'm busy, ho- I'm holding the mic right now. I'm holding my headset uh, for the mic now. I didn't do that. So, I should probably do that from now on. I just hold, hold it down. Um, then it doesn't pop. Okay. So bye 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 on donjalens.bandcamp.com slash album slash color hyphen this hyphen that is the is the link. Go listen to the album and buy it. But uh, not really because I don't think this album is actually that good. But maybe maybe you think it's fucking awesome. I mean, most people who have listened to the album, they told me it's like wow, this is really this is something really special. I mean. Maybe, like, I'm, I, right now, like, it's been three days since I recorded that last part, so I'm back to thinking it's, like, kind of terrible. Um, maybe it's, that's why I didn't have much to say about each song this time. Um, yeah, listen, listen to my albums. Um, so, more things are coming. I'm gonna, um, so I'm writing a book. That book is gonna come out, and one of them, and a video is co- gonna come out. A video that is gonna be, I don't know, okay, I can't describe the video, but I, I, it's like a novel. It's like a video novel. It's gonna book you, you lead in the video, and it has a soundtrack, and it has a musical novel too. Like, it's, it's gonna be crazy. So that video is gonna come out before the end of the year. All of this is gonna come out before the end of the year. Then for 2021, I haven't really said this much, but uh, talked about this much, but for 2021, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make an album every month. I'm gonna, Produce and release an album every month. So hopefully at least like two or three of those actually turn out to be fucking any good. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna go crazy while doing that, but I just wanna do it. I wanna, I'm gonna try doing it. Um, that's all the updates and news. I'm gonna call it this dead. Go listen to it. <sighs> Take care of yourselves, everybody. Seriously. Um,
and don't die. Don't kill yourself. Never do it. And stay happy. I think that's it. Yup. Bro, 